Welcome back to the Meister Menagerie. I'm your host, Zach Meister, and today we're saying fuck everything else that I had planned for monologues, and we're just right into it, right into it with Rich Warren. Welcome back, Rich. Who are you, and why are you in my living room? (laughs) Why are you in my bathroom? You're in my bathroom, you're in my living room, you're everywhere. Oh, man, phone. Terrible. Forgot to mute that. Sorry. It was a... That was a that was a transgression. I wouldn't my... I wouldn't have known until you mentioned it. Now, so now I'm mad. <laughs> Up on your, I do not want to step on the toes today. It is all good. I How appreciate, are you doing, man? I'm good, and I appreciate you coming on and saving my ass because, uh, just for the people that are out there, I had someone planned, but he kind of dropped the ball. He couldn't get his microphone in time because it was at his studio or rehearsal studio or whatever. Uh, love the guy, but you know, shit happens sometimes. And then had another guy planned. He couldn't do it after he finally got back to me. And then another guy was going to do it, but I had forgotten that the day that we scheduled, I had planned for doctor's appointments and to go visit my mom and hang out with my mom. So I had to cancel that. So Rich, as always, here to save my ass when I need it most. Man, you know, I always hate that. You know, I have to go get my other microphone. You know what I mean? Gosh, I mean, I can't, I got to go all the way to the studio and get my microphone. Uh, I mean, I can't never get any work done. Look at this, man. I had to just, just look at that. I just had to take a trip to the studio today to get my microphone. What do you think? Right. <laughs> I got to take an Uber. No, uh, no, I appreciate you having me on, man. I really appreciate it. I've always enjoyed being on your show. And this time we get to do it with both of us having video instead of just the one. Yes, this the... is this is the first time that we're on camera it's together. And now it's we're almost like in the same room together. It's almost like that. Yeah. See, the coolest thing is, you know, I don't know if they know this, but uh, we can be in our own rooms and fart and <laughs> we don't have to smell it. <laughs> oh, dude, because and I, and I would apologize because I've got the worst gas right now. I, I ate some cheese and some deli meats from fucking 7-Eleven and it's. <laughs> well, I don't think cheese and deli meats together would do that. I think it's just the 7-Eleven. That's well, the yeah. And well, I also had spicy pickles and. Some other things. I had I had a, a smorgasbord of snacks from Seven Eleven for dinner. So, wait a minute. Did, did, <laughs> are they like individually wrapped? I'm curious about the spiky spicy pickles. I, no, I it's like the spicy pickles. Fuck it. I got the trash bag right here. So, <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, pickle! I've never seen that. Oh, yeah, are they good. I like them. Are they uh? Are they vegan? <laughs> <laughs> Are pickles not vegan? I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'm Pickle Rick. No, uh, no I'm Pickle Rich. Uh, so <laughs> that's a that's a throwback, isn't it? Cool, yeah. man. That's that's cool. Oh, I'm gonna have to try those. That's awesome. Yeah, man. So, uh, dude, bad. there's been a lot that has changed over here since uh, since we last talked. What, what was our last conversation? I think we were talking about the the snail, right? We, no, I think we had another one after that. I think it was like maybe 12 or 13 episodes ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't remember what I did yesterday. I don't know. I can't remember 13 episodes. I could have swore we had one. Maybe I'm fucking tripping balls, but I don't know. I do this. I do this fucking every other week, man. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember anymore, man. Um. I- I just got to give you hats off, man, because you've got your albums in the back there. That's really, really awesome. It looks it looks like a really fantastic setup. You worked hard to get to this point, man. I'm always proud of you. Thank you, man. Thank you. I, you know, same as you. And I like how you got the background with your studio and the lighting in there. It looks sick. And I have my Christmas tree up and it's November 30th. I can have my Christmas tree up. If you want. Well, you know, the dedication to the Christmas. Oh, no. That's right. How do you feel about Christmas music? I made a Christmas song. I don't know if you ever knew that. It's the train one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, that is a good song. That is a good song. Well, thank you. And it was like it. And and nobody knows this, but now they're going to know because it's going to, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. It's fantastic. (laughs) Uh, I can tell you um, for sure. And I remember you and I were having this conversation where I was saying, basically your country was uh, the old school country. Like, um, I've been everywhere, man, or everywhere, man, I think is what he called it. Johnny cash and mm-hmm. uh, a few of the other guys, uh, 
what was it? My favorite is Hot Rod Lincoln. And that's Commander Cody, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you, you listen to those guys, and they've got this cadence. And even Charlie Daniels, even with that right there, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Devil went down to Georgia. And I was thinking, dude, these are, this is just basically hip hop. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I know it all stems from jazz. Jazz comes from classical, and it comes from, and I should, sorry, it comes from like blue, bluegrass. And then the, then you have like uh, and I, I want to say that comes from classical, excuse me, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so we were, you and I were talking about it, and I thought, I mean, I can rap, but can I do country? So yeah, and thus the Christmas train was born. I figured it would be kind of fun yeah. to write about a completely fictitious character, Jenkins Shoal, which rhymes with getting coal. Right, mm-hmm. so yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, what's this? What's this idiot's name gonna be? And I can just think of Jenkins being kind of a jerk, <laughs> jerk. <laughs> Jenkins a jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, a, but that was fun. So as far as that goes, yeah. So the sing songy Christmas music, um, tough, 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 mm-hmm. tough to call because I like the classics, uh, Bing Crosby, but it's almost been done to death. You know what I mean? That's been one area, and then you've got the the old lady that's wearing too much perfume of country music, which would be like Beyonce's Christmas songs every every year. But you know what I mean? Well, it's just it's, like it's just almost lingers. Gotta, oh God, Christmas music. I mean, I like your song, so I'm not even gonna put that into the same batch of like <laughs> these songs because it's different, it's creative, you know. Um, and like a lot of times, I don't even associate it with Christmas. When I when I when I've heard it, I just because it has like an original story to it, and it's just like trains and coal kind of go hand in hand anyway. So it's like you can almost listen to it like not on Christmas and think of Christmas, and and not think of Christmas. I mean, you know what I mean? Right. So I'm not gonna. What is the name of that song again? Just so people can listen to it. Christmas train. I want to say. Let me. Uh, okay. I just so, wanna... Aside from the title, then, but. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. That's. Uh... Rich Warren Christmas Train, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, fortunately, they made it really easy, so you should be able to see maybe some text somewhere here, there, there, anywhere. Maybe in the description, if you can read. It would Possible. be at Rich Warren OFC. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe that's the that's the name of the channel. I almost want to look to make sure, because <laughs> I want to tell you something <laughs> that's wrong. Uh, yeah. yeah, Rich Warren, at Rich Warren OFC, so capital R, capital W, Rich Warren OFC. Perfect. And you can see it there, be christmas train uh, so yeah it's g- coming up so play uh run those streams up for them because it's the time of the season but um most christmas music infuriates me i'm one of those people that fucking hates christmas music man sure. like generally just like like whether it's like the nutcracker or like the uh the the more poppy versions of stuff that you hear on the radio all the time and you know what i really wouldn't hate the music if it wasn't beaten to death mm-hmm. it's been beaten to death man like i remember being in like the the we had to be we, we were forced in those school christmas pageants in elementary school we had to learn all the fucking christmas songs and sing them horribly for our parents and nobody <laughs> what nobody wanted to actually be there and listen to these kids terribly sing these horrible songs and none of us wanted to sing them. So I don't understand why we did it and why we were forced to do it. And then going into grocery stores, going into restaurants, and then they they play it, you know what I mean? Like I just I I, I can't do it, man. It it drives me nuts. It drives me absolutely nuts. And then I have friends, I have friends that do like and I love a lot of my friends and I love their music, but I tell them this like I will not listen to their christmas music most of the time because like especially christmas rap like why are you rapping about santa claus and shit dude like i, I fucking can't do it dude. i can't do it. i can't do it <laughs> i don't blame you i don't blame you because it's, it's very <laughs> weird to think of and you know they do have i get it there there are the the santa clauses what do they call it santa claus i think i can't remember which one it was but he's supposed to be like you know mean right like a mean krampus santa. krampus krampus that's yeah. it there's supposed to be a mean santa yeah and you know that's cool it's been done yeah i've seen i've seen it the krampus thing i've seen the uh the the grinch rap song as i've seen and that's one of the other reasons that I, I wrote christmas train too because nobody talks about where the coal comes from and why he uses it mm-hmm. now there was 
and actual literature. And, and I'm glad that you brought this up because I just thought about it. Um, where I got the idea for this was the reason that he gave out coal was because it was, uh, basically it was lantern fuel and nothing to really play with. So I didn't, I didn't know it was something to just heat the house. It was, it was something that they wouldn't like. It wasn't so much that you got a lump of coal in your stocking just be in, and, and, uh, just because you were bad, it was still something that was supposed to be helpful, but to teach you a lesson about like sharing and giving it to others and you can use it to heat the house. And so you're, you're give, contributing to learn mm. from your lesson of being bad or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And, and that's a very foggy interpretation of what I remember reading, but I tell you this much, <laughs> very foggy. One of the very foggy Christmas <laughs> Eve. I'm going to watch you slither out of your skin. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, as far as as far as in these other people, and I'll see a lot of uh, Juggalo horrorcore uh, Santa Claus stuff. And um, every year, I'm sent different artists' uh, music, and I'm not I'm not trying to sound like a complete douche and just mean or anything like that. I don't want to be a, a, a an ass to anybody, but I don't listen to other people's music unless there's somebody that I'm pretty much directly affiliated with or I'm working with or something like that, or maybe, uh, maybe would have, uh, you know, a future together in, as far as business is concerned. And I do that not because uh, I, I have some kind of like ego or anything like that. I just don't let literally don't have time to sit here and, and listen to seven different songs that, you know, seven different people sent me. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, you don't understand the the production. You know, the reason why things sound the way they do is because I spend a ton of time with the uh, production side of things. So, and I'm, I'm the only one doing it all. And uh, again, so I, I, I try to apologize to them best I can, but it's to the point where I'm not to just be mean and just say, Hey, thanks, but no, thanks. Don't send me any. As a matter of fact, I think, don't you remember I made that Facebook post a while ago? I said, don't send me any more unsolicited music. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to it. I uh, appreciate it, but no, yeah. thank you. No, I remember the post, and, yeah. And I'm start I started to wonder if it was like, oh, well, maybe these people want an another fan. They want somebody like myself to watch them or something like that. And I don't mind if an artist does it correctly. I had this one guy do it and he was awesome. I don't remember what his name was right off the bat. If I did, I'd shout you out because uh he did a really good job. He approached me, sent me a very well, very well put together, thought out essay maybe four paragraphs, you know, or sorry, maybe four sentences, four to six sentences where he said, uh, you know, hi, my name is I, Steve, Bill. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I do this music. I'm, I'm usually, I'm, I'm known for doing this, but I'm, I'm very genre specific in this, but I have known to do this. And I would really appreciate it if you can just give me a couple of uh, words to hear. And I went, well, yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, he did it correctly. Most everybody just uh, they just put a link in your inbox and then send yeah. it. Yeah, I mean it's it's a kid of just like throwing a piece of paper at you. It's spam. It is it's it is spam. Yeah, that's, no. I don't I don't want to deal with that. And then uh, on top of that, it I think it keeps your palate fresh when you're only using your imagination to create music, because I've gone to the point now where I'm doing self production, uh, beats buying beats done. Not doing it anymore. Uh, I don't I don't like that side of the industry. Mm. I'm not saying I don't appreciate what they do. I, I like a good producer. Don't get me wrong. I've worked with them. There's a reason why uh, one of my beats, I think we, I don't remember if we didn't call it Gravesite. It was something else. I think it was Martyr. The beat was called Martyr. That was with uh, Danson. And uh, Tom McDonald ended up picking it up. Mm. And that was that was pretty cool. So he picked it up, and that's what he. I think he pretty much got to start with White Boy, right? Yeah. Well, he had some songs before that that uh, I knew that were flying around. He had like Hell of It and uh, Wheels Keep Turning. Like White Boy was when he really started to lean into the political shit. Because at okay. first, when at first when he was started to do music, it was more like. Um, he was talking about PTSD and dissing like mumble rappers and shit like that, and then he started to like. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is not to go off on a tangent. I like his early music, yeah. all the way up until about 
basically about White Boy. When when White Boy came out, I was kind of like, eh. and then he put out a couple. <laughs> he put out a couple other songs that I was like into because I liked the message. But then like he just, you know, he's a, he's a grifter. He's a fucking grifter. You know. Hey, I I really don't have much of an opinion on him because I never met him. Uh, I'm sure he's thanks. a nice guy. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. But thanks to his uh, patronage, you know, I got, you know, I made a couple couple bucks off of uh, off of the beat. <laughs> I think that was just before he stopped buying them too. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, I, I think he was saying, you know, I never never bought a beat or something like that. But uh, no, I'm here to tell you, that is it. And I thought about making like a little quick guitar uh, tutorial. I can show you how to play it. It's the easiest, simplest thing I think I've ever made. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. Uh, I I really enjoyed making it because I made it with my my homeboy Danson. I ended up meeting him down in L.A. Uh, this was when I filmed uh, shot uh, "Earn Your Way In" with Joker. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and that was a it was a really fun time. I know we're getting off the topic of music, uh, Christmas music. I'll get back there in a second. <laughs> so yeah, I know. Walking right on through, just the, we're the just having a material. conversation. It's just a conversation. So yeah. Right. So, and uh and so what what ended up happening so i ended up uh just hollering at him i was just like you know text him he's like hey man i'm in la if you want to meet up i just put a handshake on you i was renting a car so you know we're good to go I said, sure he says yeah man i meet up and he got like pancakes we, we, it was cool man we had like breakfast we had pancakes and stuff like that and i met up with the guy i still regret to this day not getting a picture with him i got a picture with joker i got a picture of like pictures of places around where he was uh you know where he shot what was that one where he went? Uh... <laughs> what was that? I, I'm I'm gonna say this, but you can you can go ahead and bleep me. But he said, uh, "Fact, I can say, nigga, 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 black people." <laughs> 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 that was too good. Um, and uh, so he was showing me. Do uh, you remember the name of that song? I can't remember. I know it. what you're talking about. I can't remember, man. Yeah, he's like, got da, so many songs. Da, 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 da. That was it was very very well put together uh good stuff good stuff and uh wow yeah. he was i guess he he was i talked to him about that he was saying that it was it was something he shot he could just proved that he could shoot it all by himself and do the whole thing so i'm ending up mm -hmm. i'm working on a track like that now but uh as far as uh the christmas music goes i'll go we'll circle back and just say this uh i i really enjoyed making the christmas train and that was sort of the introduction to all of the self-production yeah and so that was uh that one is owned uh outright by me from top to bottom nobody can claim ownership i've got i've got the seal from the copyright office of the united states oh yeah uh so i'm gonna start uh, piling those together it's gonna be to the point where i'm gonna have too many and i know that's coming but <laughs> at least i'll have the paperwork. Yeah, get those filing oh, cabinets in order man <laughs> right and that's and here's the thing is you know that's business expense Mm -hmm. I run a business, and uh, it's business. Business is good. You remember? You remember? Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Major Payne. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love oh, that yeah. movie. Hell yeah, man. Classic. Fucking classic. Yeah, yeah. If not, um, well, that's dope. That's fucking dope, man. I, before we move too uh too far, I do want to just give the audience out there just a quick um. If you are an artist and you're listening, I I, I didn't want to brush over this topic too much, but um, do not spam your fucking music in people's inboxes. If you want people <laughs> to listen to your music, you got a community build, and that means making friends. That means if you want people to spend their time listening to you, you have to spend your time talking to them and make them want to fucking listen. You know, when people take that time to let me know who they are, and to know that they're a real person and not just like a scam artist or a, a, a robot or, you know, just a piece of shit in general. Talk to talk to the person that you're inboxing. And if you don't have the time for that, then you don't really have the time for music and no one's going to have the time for you. So. Wait a minute. I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I most certainly. I most certainly. <laughs> That's right. Shots Perfect. fired. Shots fired. It's true though. It is true. I just I I didn't want to tell you about that, but no, that's my surprise. I, 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 I need to get one of those. It's a it's not a sound box. It's just an NPC. It's just something I just. Well, I need something like that that I could just play <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? I'll turn you on to it, man. I'll turn you on please, to it. They're really do. 
they're really fun to have. I'll uh, I'll I'll even give you some some. Uh, I think that was a free pack. Or yeah, something I ended up getting you know, a while. I mean, this we're talking. 2015 2014 2015 <laughs> it was like you know you yeah. look up free back then and fortunately yeah. you know this was all the rage uh back when yeah. everybody was using it so and now you don't hear it as much but uh yeah man don't uh, i really appreciate it when people and, and i guess what kids would call come correct yeah uh, when you when you come correctly when you approach people professionally, I'll put it this way. Let me let me use some sense here. Let me let me use my fat head over here and all my years of experience and say this with uh, grammatically correct. Just be polite. <laughs> That's all you yeah. gotta do. Be polite. Be kind. Be personable. Yep. And people will listen to your music. I never. I made a I made a pact. Uh, so I started making uh, recent uh, Facebook posts. Uh, one of which, you know, I think I told you about is, uh, you know, I'm not posting anything else on Spotify, which we'll, we'll get to in a second, but yeah, continue right. your thought. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, uh, the other thing is, is, uh, you know, with the whole, you know, don't send me, don't send me that, that, that stuff there, but I don't accept friend requests either. I'm not going to be, I know friends. I saw that. How come, how come you're not speci- uh, accepting friend requests? I don't, I want to be able to keep my Facebook my facebook if if you know let's just say i get 25 million subscribers on youtube right mm-hmm. uh 100 or a uh, 100,000 500,000 700,000 whatever name your number on facebook or something like that all of those people will drown out the people that i knew from you know when i added them first in 20 or 2009 you know what i mean or 2006 yeah. or 3 I, I don't remember when facebook i pretty much had facebook when it came out uh I wasn't into music and stuff. I was I was into music and making it, but I wasn't like producing it professionally on a professional level. God, my old music sucks. Uh, anyway, not <laughs> does, the point. Does all of our old music suck? You, you know what's funny is is uh, I'll, I'll I'm gonna hold this thought because I want it. This is a yeah. very special thing, and it's it's super. Uh, it's something that makes people. It's very thought provoking. Mm. Uh, but as far as as far as that, I don't I don't want to lose. Uh, all those people that, uh, you, you know, I don't want the, I don't really want like easy access. You know, people feel like, oh, it's just, you know, I can just walk right up. They can just walk right up to me or you or anybody else that I might be affiliated with and just say, hey, my name is so forth and so on. I went to school with him and, you know, he's a punk ass. <laughs> you know, I don't want anybody just being able to that. say anything like that or just, you know, and oops and uh, run uh, and run, you know, their mouths or do something silly. But I also don't want to be able, I don't want to lose that, that special um uh, personable feeling that I have with the people that I have on there. So it's only 500 something like that and it it's not really going to change unless I know somebody. So it's sort of a personal Facebook and I'm going to keep it that way. I tried the digital creator thing and it makes no sense to have a digital creator page when you have a business page or an artist's page. Actually, I disagree. What's the point? Yeah, go ahead. I think it's better. I think it's better. Because now you have to pay for your business page to be seen. And same thing. Like, I'm going to, I don't want to name drop, but I know someone who has 600,000 followers on their artist page. They posted a thing yesterday or the other day. Guess how many likes they got on it? 40. 17. 17? Whoa, it's 600. 600 thousand followers 17 likes they want you to pay to be seen on your own artist or business page but the digital the digital creator thing they're not charged on you because it's your personal facebook still but they're getting ready you you know they're gonna end that they're gonna they're gonna yank that carpet out not until tiktok isn't competition anymore oh i see that's smart that's really smart. I uh, they they they've talked about they've talked about removing you making the ability to make money on it cuz they had those little star things and people can donate money so they wanted to like like minimize how much you get per star or whatever. But as of right now, as long as you post regularly on your digital creator page and you get interaction on each thing, then you will still get uh organic reach okay 
it's not it's not the same thing with the with the business and like pages anymore so that's why i never even use my business page anymore because i or my zach meister page anymore because my personal zach meister page gets way more interaction it gets uh way more likes and i just in general have way more followers and friends on there um you know at one point it was the same on both but like it just it was always it never got anything because they choked the reach super hard on the pages so it's not even worth using you know like i think it's a, it's, it's kind of a scam i don't i don't really trust meta or facebook but no. i at, no. right as of right now and obviously this will change this isn't like me saying this is a permanent and all to like what you need for social media. I do think as of right now, the digital creator page is the preferred method because it's new. Same thing with reels and, um, and stories on Facebook because they created stories to compete with TikTok, not TikTok. Um, they created stories to compete with Snapchat and they created reels to compete with TikTok. I haven't used Snapchat since nobody uses Snapchat anymore. I mean, oh, people people do you no no people do use Snapchat, but I think it's mostly for nudes. People, you know, women like to share their nudes on there, but it's like, you know, if they screenshot it because it tells you if you screenshot someone's pictures or their, their their messages, and you can't save it directly from there, and um, hmm. and it and it goes away after they open it. So like, if you were a woman who was trying to like. Or anybody really, if you were someone trying to send nudes, but you didn't want it to be like, like go out into the public, like you could send it to someone and you'll know that it will disappear and it will tell you if they try to save it. Yeah, it's too bad I had a prop here. I think I put it away. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna make. But it, I, I, my I point being is, I think, example. I think Snapchat only is used for. I mean, I, I know Snapchat's trying to become more of like a normal social media, but I, I generally think most people just use it for like. Yeah, those days are over. Those days are over for Snapchat. No way. I don't think they're going to come back from that. And they're well, gonna, I know they're a gonna... lot. Of, I know a lot of people who still have and use Snapchat. I know a lot of people, but Fair. I just like why? Like, what's the point of it? Like TikTok's better. I'm not going to say Facebook and Instagram are better, but they do all the same shit. Like, why do I need Snapchat? Like, well, because you got you got to look at those fancy nudes, man. Well, that's the only <laughs> I, that's the only reason I have a Snapchat, but I don't actually really use it for anything else. I was just gonna say, well, I I don't know what I ended up doing with that because I had that uh, video shoot today, but uh, now I have a little point and shoot camera, and I'm like, well, can you detect this? <laughs> oh. but no, it would have been funny if i had the prop now it just looks like i'm an idiot because i'm holding no i get the i get the joke i know some people that have two two phones and they would take pictures of the nudes with the other phones really <laughs> okay so they were already doing that i didn't yeah, know pe people do do shit like that and also apparently for android there is an app that will screenshot it for you without alerting without alerting the person so there is like technology for it but it's not like not as many people know about it, um, you know, or not most people don't have fucking two phones unless they sell drugs or, you know. Why does everybody say that? I have two phones. I have one phone that's deactivated. I've got two phones. One for the bung, one for the plug. I got two uh, yeah, but... phones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> well, okay, some people do have two phones for different reasons. Some people have like a work phone and a personal phone. Some people have uh, uh, a trap phone. Some people have These uh, a, a social media phone. Like I know social media creators that have one just to create content because content takes up so much fucking space on their phone. So like exactly. I get, I get it. I don't, so... I don't, I don't want to fuck. I don't even like carrying a wallet, man. Like my my phone is my wallet like oh dude you got the little wallet thing in the back too that's dope that's well awesome. it, it, fold, it folds up i just have it open currently so i can see if someone texts me or calls me but that's cool, cool. look at yeah. that see, so it's professional old, look at it's you old people shit i mean everyone says that it's like only old people have that i'm like i don't give a fuck now i don't have to carry a phone in one pocket and a wallet in the other pocket and and hold up I, how are you gonna sorry go ahead yeah go ahead no no no, no. what were you gonna say 
No, I was going to say, how are you going to be an old person when you just organized? But yeah. Well, that's my, I, I'm all about utility. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I like utility more than like fashion. Like, I do like looking, I do like looking sharp sometimes, but like, I don't want to be busting out a wallet and only have one credit card in it and like ten ball ten dollars and like change. Like you know what I mean? Like there's no there's no point. Like I got two cards, I got some business cards. I never carry cash on me. Why do I need a whole ass wallet? You know what I mean? Why is it that you just described my wallet though? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yeah, it's like two credit cards and ten bucks. I don't keep a lot of my wallet, man. Why do you need a whole ass wallet? Like like okay so like my shit I'm not, i want to cover up my numbers and shit but my shit it has my id my debit my credit card my business cards and then i got like a couple bucks in there like yeah. i don't need any oh and then i got a triple a card in there too but like other than that like i don't need a whole ass wallet i don't have 50 cards i don't if you have a dozen cards if you have like cash on you constantly and like receipts and other things like that sure i get it you know but dude i still carry an insurance card okay I might listen, I don't want to have to pull up the stupid app on my phone and punch that in because you know there's a where I'm at, it's kind of rural and where I where I like to go. And if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get pulled over, it's probably gonna be for speed. I'm not saying I I like speed a lot. I really don't. Uh I don't I don't even have a speed ticket to this day. But uh yeah, if if I'm out in the middle of the boonies and I can't produce insurance, that's another ticket. So I just might as well just pull out the little slip and there you go. Uh, I do a lot of filming, especially out in the middle of nowhere. So it's not unheard of for me to go grab one of my hillbilly vehicles that I want. I don't mind getting mud and scraped up by bushes and stuff like that. So I'll take something out there. And those ones always get, dude, I've been tailed more by, I've been pulled over quite a bit. But mm -hmm. after they see I have insurance, registration, and uh, a valid license, no criminal record, they're just going, well. I was expecting to get you on something today, but I guess we're just going to go ahead and leave you alone. I love, I love that. I love it mm -hmm. because it changes the precedent. So uh, it changes that uh, that narrative and, and, that, and that bad association with seeing somebody with a piece of crap car. And people say it's a piece of crap car. I'm going to just go on this little tangent and tell you this. Drive the piece of crap car because guess what it's not going to do? It ain't gonna, it's, not, it's not going to cost you a metric fortune to find uh, uh, little parts for the stupid thing. I've got a Volkswagen. That thing is expensive to upkeep. It's 2015, but I also have an an 86 F250. I used to used to drive it around every day and stuff like that. But those parts will cost you 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. You know, but you can always get the cheap Chineseium, and it works. It all works. But anyway, uh, I didn't want to drift too far off without saying this. Uh, it's when we were talking about, I'm going to just circle back to this with the uh, music. Uh, as far as, you know, we were talking about the uh, development of our music styles and how we kind of sucked when we were younger. Uh, All right. One of the coolest things that I ever read was this girl said, and it was, I think it was like Pinterest or something like that, and it just kind of showed up or somebody shared it. I don't remember what ended up happening. But... Uh, you, you, the little kid version of yourself was dreaming of the things that you're doing today. Don't let him down. So that's pretty, it's pretty cool. So, I, and I got to thinking about that, you know, I look at, look at this, you know, this, this microphone and stuff like that. I remember when I dreamed of having the kind of same kind of microphone I dreamed of having, you know, a guitar amp like that and this compressor and you know what I mean? I've, I dreamed of having that stuff. So, and now that, you know, I put in, stupid you know we're talking 80 hours a week zach mm -hmm. and we're putting in dumb hours doing welding and then i worked a second job and stuff like that and, you know and it, we, it's about the most insulting thing i heard here when people say oh you're lucky man lucky <laughs> yeah. i sold my soul for that in one and not i'm not talking about for illuminati or anything like that i'm talking about i had to work <laughs> yeah no you <laughs> worked was, very hard yeah, man. So, yeah. hey, that's that's just the way it goes, and and I'm I'm cool with that. I I just uh, I'm I'm always kind of appreciative of myself for that. So I don't want to. I, I kind of hope that anybody else would think to themselves and give themselves an opportunity and think of the little kid that they used to be that's in the position that the little kid wanted to be in. So be thankful, man. That's that's what I got to say for for my Thanksgiving since we kind of missed Thanksgiving a little bit. But 
you know. we did miss thanksgiving a little bit it's all good it's all good we got christmas to look forward to now these are all whatever holidays to me <laughs> i mean look i look at not to brush over what you just said because i do like what you said although what i was thinking was when i was a little kid i was too busy ramming my head into walls because i had no concept of brain damage but um true story um I was doing stupid shit when I was a kid, man. I don't know why I was doing that shit, but um, it's I'm not fun. a big, I'm not a big holiday guy. Mm-hmm. Um, nowadays I just look at holidays as like a reason to take off of work and spend time with like family. You know, like to me, like each one is just a day off to eat and drink and be jolly with people I enjoy. You know, like. So I look at each holiday and every nothing... excuse, every excuse we get to do that. It's great because life is fucking short and people don't live forever. So, yeah. Yeah. If I knew how short life was when I was a kid, I would not have, I, have felt the way I did it. Cause I didn't really voice it too much. Cause it was just easier to, uh, you know, when I'm, I don't know, I, you, everybody else kind of grew up one way. I think I grew up a different, uh, it was just easier not to complain. <laughs> Just yeah. go and do the stupid thing and get it over with. Uh, and I got kind of fortunate because, you know, at that point, I'd like, I had a Game Boy or something like that. Mm. But uh, it was pretty easy. You know, that was before we had these. So I could just sit back there and you know, pew, 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 play Pokemon or something. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't imagine growing up with smartphones. No, no, no. Mm-mm. No. Um, maybe Snake on one of those Nokia phones. <laughs> Even that, <laughs> but, I was like, fuck, why am I playing this? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. But, yeah. uh, and you know, and it kept you out of, kept me out of trouble, kept, kept kids out of trouble. I noticed for the most part, but yeah. And, mm-hmm. and knowing how short those times were and, and all the people that died, even, you know, here I am in my thirties now and there's, I've dealt with a lot of death and, uh, sort of a, a late kid, but, uh, that's why, that's why I stick to myself anymore. When I have the opportunity to spend some time with some people I like, I do it like, you know, yourself or, uh, family you know, dogs, stuff like that. It's just times that I know I'm not going to get back. And so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's easier to do. So, so holidays kind of have a different meaning anymore. It's not about presents. It's never, it wasn't really ever about presents. I mean, they told us that in the cartoons, but we, right. you know, we always like the presents. No one fucking, we all like the presents. We can't sure. lie, you know? Sure. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm saying it's not that, uh, I think presents for me changed in my teens because, after I got my first guitar, it was all over. <laughs> it was all over. I was like, I, I like video games, but I, I really like guitar. It's just and, less. Uh, it's just when you receive a gift, we know what a gift is now, as opposed yeah. to back then. Like we didn't understand the concept. Like when we were little kids, we have no concept of uh, money or what it took to uh, uh, achieve that currency for our parents. You know what I mean? Like the work that put, like when we're little, you know what I mean? Once we get older, like we have a better understanding of that. We have a better understanding of what gift is, <laughs> gift giving is and like the appreciation and shit like that as we're older. And um, it's less, it's less magical and like less like spontaneous. And it's more just like, it's just a nice, nice treat that we can appreciate and be like, Oh fuck. Yeah, dude. Like, hell yeah. Like this, that's the shit. See, like, and that's, thank, and- you know, See and it, yeah, there you go. There's your there's your Christmas song. <laughs> I'm just I'm messing with you. I know I'm you are. I you. know you are. <laughs> I'm picking on you. Just watch you start just, <laughs> ripping just the skin aged off. Ten years right now. But uh, uh, <laughs> as far as well, I appreciate I appreciate you liking mine though. Uh, but I tell you this no, much. No, it's good. Uh, it's good. Yeah. I think it's I think it's just the for me. I didn't really. I guess I really didn't really understand the concept of kids at Christmas until I started giving some of my friends kids gifts. So I was like, uncle rich is going to give them something cool. And I always did. So if, if as long as it was age appropriate, I'd give them stuff like uh BB guns. Like I wanted when I was a kid and then you see their face light up. And so here's the trick. Here's the coolest thing. You get them a BB gun. Dad likes it too. Mom yeah. hates it, but See, Dad likes it. He's got bottles. He's got a backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you He'll can't play with take... it more. He'll play with it more. <laughs> exactly, <yeah. laughs> exactly. So it's more a gift for him than yeah. for the kid. But yeah. uh, and as long as I think 
that's why it's cool to to, to have that to, it's, it's kind of like i don't know if they ever thought about it but like firearm safety um mm-hmm. uh, it gives it gets them promoted into that as well so that way they're not getting the idea that they should take it to school and stuff like that as long as they're doing something as a younger age and learning how to do it and do it right i, I don't think they're ever gonna have a problem there's been mm-hmm. plenty of kids we have a mental health problem i won't get into that too much but we have a mental health problem now. we absolutely do but yeah and and how speaking of you know i want to i just want to broach that and just say uh this is one of the most depressing times of year and so i know now why they created christmas music is to make people happy so and i, and I mm-hmm. can understand that so just you know be nice to people and that's what i try to do I and mean, i think uh, everybody just tries to do that so yeah. if you're if you're depressed and stuff this christmas season and it's it's and i think i know why because the sun isn't out is like if you're up here like where i'm at it's raining about 24 7 eh. <laughs> all the way until it just until about august and then it starts being sunny for 30 days but uh uh when it when it's dark at four and it stays dark until six seven and the next day everybody goes home <laughs> mm. you get home you kill you go to work in the dark and come home in the dark and then you just drink and get more depressed so yeah, yeah eh, don't try okay. try to try to work yourself out. Get get some what do they call it, like better help and stuff like that. Go go do all that stuff. Take your yeah. take your mental health seriously. That's I think Definitely. I think that's a good thing. Absolutely. Because sure. me, I'm a seclusive person. I'm I'm a reclusive person. I like to to stay to myself. So again, this was where that whole thing of having uh 500 uh you know people I've actually met staying on my Facebook in, instead of five million. You know, wow. I'd rather just keep that. I want I'm, I'm a private per, private person. I don't I don't like all those people poking their nose in my business because there's well, too you many copycats well, if your page is a digital thing you can have more than five thousand followers you get your max is five thousand friends but you can have more five you can have more than five thousand followers have you ever noticed that people that have that have the that met the five thousand friend threshold act different you ever act like they're fucking cool as shit yeah it, you notice that too then so some some of them do i'm not okay. gonna lie i think i think some of them earned it mm-hmm <laughs> And, and and um, I I can't be mad at them because I do think that they earned it because they are talented artists. They have done tons of shows. They put in the work, and like I think they deserve it. And then there's other people you can tell like they just sat there and clicked add 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 until they hit that cap. You know what I mean? And then just delete people along the way but um before we go any further i do want to tell a little story about sure. child childhood christmas magic because i it, it, it oh. kind of goes along with what you were just saying but uh we move very quickly when we speak so i want to go back true. to it because it's a fun one and i think you'll like this story oh cool uh i was living at my ex's house when 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 we were still together and uh we were also living with her sister, her sister's husband, and uh, her niece. So, like, the niece is, like, three years old. And one day, Hans came over. Do you remember when I was doing, what the fuck was that show, uh, Mail Day? Yeah, yeah. yeah I miss me and Hans day. are doing Mail Day. Hans came over for Mail Day one day. Uh, no, actually, it wasn't for Mail Day. He just stopped by to drop off a present for me. But he came dressed as Santa Claus. And... <laughs> The little girl was so fucking ecstatic that Santa showed up to the house. Because, you know, Hans was, like, chubby. He had the full Santa outfit on. And she was, like, so, like, <gasps> like, like blown away. Like, she was in shock. But she was, like, so fucking happy that Santa was there. And it was, like, the most adorable thing in the world. And I think that was one of the first. I don't want to say the first times. But as an adult, I would say that's probably... One of my first instances of like personalized, like seeing the Christmas magic for like one of the new generations, you know what I mean? Like in person and not, you know, cause I don't go to the fucking mall. I'm not 14 years old. So I don't <laughs> see like the Christmas kids lines and shit like that. You know what I mean? So like that was probably my first like real experience with like, you know, that. And it was, it was cute. And I, I can appreciate that. It was adorable as fuck. If there was one thing that I would never really want to do again, and I think that's it, is, you know, Easter Bunny and Santa pictures. No more. <laughs> no more. Maybe maybe when I get to be in, like, my 60s, something like that, 70s, 
I will have longed for those times, but I think I think it's our job as adults to vicariously live through children. I so think it's I think it's to, antiquated. Right. So so it's one of those things where we just uh give them their experiences and make sure that they are they're happy and that's and that's that's cool. And so I don't have I don't have any kids of my own and uh by by design. Uh God, if I would have had kids with Oh, I'm not gonna get into that too much because that's gonna be talking real mean about people real quick. <laughs> that's hey, look, be... I can I can go on about that all day long too. I don't know. I mean, good God, yeah. If if bullets were dodged, it would have been fifty cals. But I, uh, you know I'm what not, I mean. I'm not I'm not raising no pet sperm myself. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it here's it here's the thing, and I commend I commend the guys who were you know sticking it through their fathers for kids uh that they may or may not have wanted <laughs> but at the same time they all t- treat them and, and cherish them and i and i really hope they do don't be abusing no kids man nobody wants that yeah. but uh yeah it's, no, so don't i be, think it's, don't be a deadbeat dad either no, you know no, be, be there for your kids deadbeat mom for that fact I, yeah I, that's no. true too i don't want to leave out the women fuck you women out there <laughs> 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 oh man holy smokes dude memes Memes are getting ruthless. No, memes oh, have been always been ruthless. But yes, I agree. They are they are a specific brand of ruthless these days. I saw one the other day that was like, dude, how's that even? How's that not banned? Like, you know, the fact independent fact checkers when they put the little grade out over it, and the one it said uh, there'd be a whole lot more deadbeat women if it wasn't for social assistance. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. you're gonna have to take that up with the government. <laughs> I'm not well, look, touching that one. The you thing guys is, are nuts. I think the pendulum swings socially back and forth, you know, because sometimes we'll get like real. Damn. I missed my know. opportunity. I was going to go. <laughs> Shots fired, man. <laughs> that was terrible. I it. Terrible. I love it. I love it. But no, I do think the pendulum swings. And I think the reason why we're getting away with a lot of the jokes that we see nowadays is because of that swinging pendulum people are sick of liberal crybaby shit man i just you know i don't think people care anymore right now you know? i think it works both and you're right because it's the pendulum effect i think it works both yeah. ways this so it, t- this it, it'll, it'll go back left but right now i think right. it's kind of swinging right you know yeah and each each side hates each other doing oh. something. Men win, women hate each other. People yeah. and these people hate each other. These people, you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. Everybody's always going to hate each other. It's never going to change. It never changed. We've always been monkeys that hated each other yeah. for some reason, yet we've evolved. <laughs> yeah, and we so, s- still have a society, and we still we upgraded procreate, from, and we still build shit. So. We upgraded from rocks to nukes. That's pretty <laughs> much it. <laughs> pretty monkeys. fucking quickly, uh, I might add, too. So. Yeah, but sure, man. That's funny. But yeah, so happy holidays, and merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that'd it be, is the holiday season. That'd be a good one for a short. <laughs> yeah. That so you want to do that? Spotify. Spotify. Oh, I got a lot to talk about Spotify. Share your thoughts because I have my own thoughts on it. All right, it's pretty simple. I put out a uh, post on. Uh, my Facebook and, and and Instagram. I didn't do it on YouTube. I try to keep YouTube for the content that's gonna be fun and energetic. I don't really ever want it to be kind of a bad time. It's not. Excuse me. It's 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 a TV show. Sure. I mean, you know what I mean. It's like YouTube is TV essentially anymore. It's not just a place where you can kind of go and look up dumb cat videos. I mean, it still is, but not mm-hmm. so much. But uh, so I didn't put it there. But it was a video that basically said. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna play any more of this Spotify nonsense. I've been working for the last year. I've had a a year that's full of really high highs and extremely low lows. Uh, this was not a good year for making music for me. Uh, I was able to make music, but I wasn't able to release anything. So uh, it's it's been a year chock full of of doing that kind of stuff, and I want to be able to to make it so that uh, my YouTube and stuff like that and my content that's going to get released will be released on a decent schedule. It'll all be coheat, you know. It'll be the production value will be where I want it and stuff like that. And in order to do that, you had to I had to make a whole bunch of moves to move this thing over here and fix this. You know what I mean? You, you ever seen those little slider things where you have to slide it and get all the pieces to match? 
but yeah. you know, you, there's that like, one empty square that's like really puzzles, just puzzles, messing puzzles, with you. Yeah. yeah, that's been that was basically this whole year. Just when you thought I had it, I didn't. So uh, that's where that's where I was left with that. That's why I said I've been switched switched over doing my own production. But anyway, as far as Spotify goes, they decided to I guess now in January or something like that. They say if you're I think last I read that it was supposed to be if your songs don't achieve a thousand streams, yeah, they're not going to pay for them. It does, not if you don't have a thousand followers. It's if you don't have a thousand, a thousand stream, streams. A thousand streams on the song per month. Right. Okay. It's per month. If it goes oh. under that in a month, then you stop losing. You stop getting the money on it. But if you can continue getting that many per month, then you'll still get money on it. But if it goes under a thousand a month, yeah. Okay, that's good to know because um, I'm glad. I'm glad you clarified that. I haven't researched it because I basically just said I I'm I quit not doing it anymore. Uh, f you. Uh, I don't unless something changes where it would be worth my time. Um, I don't like. I don't want to get ripped off. So again, like I said, switched over, switched over to my own production, and so I'm not going to have. Uh, I have legal copyright of everything I do. If I'm going to put that for somewhere for somebody to listen to it for free, it might as well be on something that I own. In case in point, my website, uh, uh, or any any place else that would actually accrue some kind of payment. I don't care if it's for free. Fine. Depending on what it is that I do, I could put Christmas Train on there for free if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But if it's on Spotify, getting spins and they're getting money for something I did that's copyrighted from from me for me, that's theft. You can't do that. I'm not going to let you do that. You're not going to steal from me. I've never been stolen from enough. Mm -hmm. So I own it. Not going to do it anymore. So any service that does that from here on out is going to be removed. I will not have my music up there. I'm not going to play that game pretty soon. Uh, you know, I always notice that the big people who are bigger, they're just like, I already make that. I don't care, but that's not the point. The point is when people, I remember what it was like when I got three streams and I thought that was just extreme. That was just, and I didn't do it myself. Somebody else listened to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So why would I take that away? That, that value, that sense of, point zero 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 five cents that that uh achievement why mm -hmm. would i take that away from somebody i i, I don't i don't believe that's a, a good system to keep paying playing into and a lot of these guys they don't think i see it and they don't think i know but i do know <laughs> that they will get a hold of people who take pictures like this with all their jewelry on and they'll be uh saying you can promote your song with me give me 60 80 bucks and i'll promote your song the problem is they only do it for this amount of time and you'll notice that their viewership is dead here and dead here okay between yeah. those two times right there you can achieve that a thousand streams a month or whatever it might be and still collect your money back then you start following falling into a different system i bet you if you read through the contract you'll find in that category somewhere that you can't spot uh, uh what I call puff up your your views like that if you do you're you're basically inflating yourself and you're going to get caught and yeah. i don't think that's legitimate because they say they're curators but they never I, I i've never seen one prove it have you you know i don't really know i i, <laughs> I don't know when it comes to spotify like what they're doing over there as far as the logistics or as far as them keeping you know people from puffing up artificially or i i don't know man i don't know if they have a thing going on with that uh i heard that they were talking about possibly either removing fake views from like bot accounts or possibly even banning or deleting accounts that use that but I haven't seen I haven't seen anything about it. And just to be fair, I'm not Spotify wrapped. I'm not 100 mm -hmm. percent certain that those numbers aren't entirely inflated a little bit. Um, and then I also know that like everyone that I see who posts their Spotify wrapped each year, the number keeps going up and up and up and up. 
which I believe that. But what I think it is, is the Spotify year from 2023 also includes all the streams from 2022. And they just add the streams that you got this year on top of that. And that's why it seems like it keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher. I don't think like some people who are showing that they got 100,000 streams got 100,000 streams just this year. They've had 100,000 streams in total of being on Spotify. Right. I think a lot of them. Maybe I'm wrong, but when I do the math and I look at like their followers and I look at their like monthly listeners and like things like that and I and I do that and I start doing the math and it almost just doesn't add up. And like every artist that's posting it is getting more and more streams each year. Like when sometimes people have like bad years and go down in streams, but that, I never see that unless they're just not posting it. But everyone that I know who's posting it posts regularly. So unless everyone I know is increasingly growing, but I don't, aside from Spotify, I don't see that growth anywhere else. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced that Spotify wrapped isn't a little bullshit. Yeah. And I think it's uh again, and, and on their side, that's free promotion. You just turned your, facebook into a billboard yeah all uh, over everyone's all spotify 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 right and so youtube did something genius this year yeah. youtube did the same thing and so now i, I i'm kind of a firm believer and i'm a, i guess maybe there's a bias here i really wouldn't even say that because I, I try to keep an open mind with most of these places so i wouldn't really say that i have a bias but people might might assume so when i when i say this next next thing um uh, YouTube is the place that should be your proving ground. Mm -hmm. If you cannot make it on YouTube, because it seems like everybody pretty much has a fair chance. If you're making garbage content, you're going to get garbage results. If you're making good content, you're probably going to get pretty good results if you do it right. And what I mean by doing it right is not to, like purchasing advertising. It's, you know, putting in the work on your thumbnail. Are you researching the right things? Are you using the right tools? There's tools that are free. The, you can the, use. the titles for the video and stuff like that. Like, you know. Yeah, like VidIQ is a really good tool, right? And and so people can use that. It's free. You can get it. You give them your email. They keep track of stuff for you. And then they make these little tiny suggestions in there that you can work on your that's why I try to like really perfect even like this stream right here with you and I. Uh I put some work, just a little bit of elbow grease into it. You might not see the mess that's over here on this side because there's a mess. I just got done filming. <laughs> and you know what it's like when you go filming. You bring out your lights, your camera, and all that kind of stuff. And that's like you see all that mess. But if you keep that out of the way and you still produce nicely on this side, then you're going to be doing fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So as far as, as far as this goes with – with with the with the wrapped so was, when when youtube decided to pull this pull this move and i think they did it at the same time for a reason because they're they're trying to take they're trying to take over spotify which i'm not too upset about uh deezer pays better um <laughs> uh, let me deezer think youtube deezer is not deezer is something else i noticed that that's where a lot of african views come from don't know why but that's cool enough for me and title so a lot of views come out of africa <laughs> Okay. I mean, this the the podcast is on Deezer, and I get a couple of views through Deezer, but not very many. Yeah, I'm, I don't. I don't know. I've never known anybody to just up and say, "Oh yeah, I use Deezer." So uh, and until I started doing the podcast, and I knew that I could upload to Deezer, never even knew it existed. Right, right. And so, uh, as far as you know, when it when it kind of goes, I think it goes hand in hand with with, with what you put into it. Um, you'll, you'll notice when people, and what's really kind of neat about it. See with Spotify, you can't really tell and the artist can, but you can, you as an audience member can look into the history of somebody and see if they've actually been putting in the work. Mm -hmm. If they have one to 500 views per video and they have like my case, 400 subscribers, it makes sense, right? You kind of figure it's a view per person plus yeah. a little extra. Um, uh, I'm not a, I'm not against advertising advertising is good is a good thing you will never have a business that doesn't do any advertising mm -hmm. so sure advertising music what better place to do that you know uh, you can use google tools there's a there's a few other places i think uh i think monster does it too 
like mm. uh like monster insights and stuff like that you know for website development and carrying on if you're into that particular field and you you, you kind of know what i'm talking about you can use yeah different web crawlers and stuff like that to, to do whatever it is that you want to do to have a look at your page and then put it forward and so forth but uh, i'm not going to get into too many of those details because i don't give away my secrets <laughs> but uh i don't think there's anything wrong with getting promotion that particular way and if you put put in the work and you get the the um you get the the viewership out of it and you do it organically which youtube again is like that place where if somebody can say i've noticed that nobody really says i can get you these views on youtube they say they can do it on spotify they can yeah. do it on amazon but they never say anything about doing it on youtube which tells me that they're not legitimate i don't i'm not i'm not sitting up there saying well, every last one of them is doing that. I'm not saying that because I'm sure I'm going to get the, you know those those people that'll say, well, you know, I you can just give forty bucks a month and then that you you pay for that and doing this that and the other thing. I'm going, well, why would I put that in somebody else's pocket when I can put it toward advertising? It makes no sense. So I I want to hear your opinion on it though before I say what I got to say because it ain't it ain't nice after that. <laughs> on Spotify or the YouTube Spotify. Okay, because I have a comment on the YouTube thing that we were just saying. Oh, sure. And uh, I want to do that before I give my Spotify the things because, uh, you know, I am also drinking, so I will forget things as we're going. But um, <clears throat> whiskey and coffee. Um, what can get today? It's good. The me. reason why I think that a lot of these uh, people don't count for specifically for music, like these music, like help you grow your music gurus and businesses and promoters and things like that don't count youtube is there's a couple of reasons so I've, i do a lot of research and listen to a lot of different like creators out there all over the internet and what they say and the reason why is because they don't see youtube as a music platform it's literally youtube music on there <laughs> but i get I, you no I'm they're not saying I mean, yeah, yeah, but um. But what about for music videos? Well, a lot of people are saying that music videos are dead. Really? Yeah, they say that it, it it's not cost effective, and a lot of people, especially young people, don't listen, don't watch music videos anymore. And uh, because so many, like, if you don't know how to make videos yourself, like, well, or you don't already have the gear. And you're not into that kind of thing, then you know spending three thousand dollars to potentially get, you know, maybe five six hundred views on it isn't worth your time, and you're better off just being on TikTok, just doing TikTok dances to your own music. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I, I'm not, that. I'm not defending, or I mean, I have my own opinions on that. Obviously, I'm a purist, and we're of the same generation of like, I fucking love music videos. And I like making music videos and I like art and I respect the art and I'm going to continue making videos because it is art to me. And it's not just, you know, um, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, is it, is it expensive? Sure. But if you promote it correctly, it still works out for in your favor and you can take clips of it for social media. But that's besides the point. The point is, is a lot of people will say that, most people don't have that kind of money or that kind of skill to make it worth it for themselves. So they say just, you know, like, like why put together a shitty music video for 50 bucks? If you, you know, you could just dance on TikTok for free. You know what I mean? Um. Anyways. <clears throat> no. And here's the thing. I'm sorry, but you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And I totally skipped that. I did not think that TikTok was ever going to move over to music because I kept getting the, uh, for you page was just all of the you know you hear the little <laughs> you know chick chipmunk and somebody's chawing sawing something up and going oh no no what what, what am i gonna do with two halves of a toilet paper you know what i mean <laughs> and it's going well, i don't why am i even seeing this i well, think it's I think, because i use a vpn what i think tiktok's on the uh potentially on the downfall on the downslope right now because uh like every other video on there's a fucking ad for marketplace <laughs> and uh take the tiktok marketplace that they just 
uh, recently uh, rolled out in the last couple months. And I know a lot of people who are like, dude, I don't even want to go on TikTok anymore because every time I'm on there, it's just like an ad for some, someone trying to sell me something. And there are still a lot of people on there, but I think that's going to get old really quick if they do not get that like, handled because it is fucking annoying. Like, like I'll be watching a video and I think, oh, this is good. Oh, no, it's a content creator trying to sell me something. It's not an actual fucking video. And I have to scroll again. I'm just like, and there's a lot of that, dude. There's so much of that. Not just, not just that, but there's also ads. Like they have like actual ads on there on top of people trying, like other content creators trying to sell you. So I think TikTok is in a, uh, like they're still one of the bigger, I think worldwide, like globally, one of the bigger apps and one of the better ones to grow organically on currently still. But I do think until they get that, uh, uh, if they do not get that under uh, under control, they will lose a lot of like just your regular followers. They're gonna find some other app to go to. You know what I mean? But um, just we'll see. We'll see what happens over the next couple years or or so. But uh, <clears throat> just just for the YouTube thing, like not only do they say that the music videos aren't like as lucrative as they used to be, um. Like, like they, they, they want, um, they want you on Spotify because managers and like labels and like sync licensing companies and other things like that that want it, they look at your Spotify numbers. Like that's one of the first things that they look at apparently, is they want to see what are your numbers on Spotify, even even like venues, like because there's there's like. There's like like official music managers that are on there that are like, yeah, like one of the first things that like venues like all over L.A., one of the first things that they look at before they even considering booking at you, booking you are your Spotify numbers. They don't look at your YouTube numbers. They don't look at your social media. They look at your Spotify. So everyone wants to be on Spotify right now and get those Spotify numbers up, 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 because that's one of the first things that everyone looks at before they even consider you. And they they have a monopoly. They have a monopoly on the industry right now. That is, it's not surprising. Mm-hmm. It's not surprising in the, in the slightest. Um, I'm sorry to make such noises of discontent. <laughs> Excuse no. me, noises of discontent. No, my allergies are kicking up again. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> no, the, the wind's starting to get nuts out here. So as soon as mm. it starts making, you know, stuff blow around. I, I get it. Going. When it's windy out here, I get all congested as shit. So. You too? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So I'm not the only one. Okay. Kind of cool because I can almost do the Ford commercial. But uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, I, I tell you this much, man. It is... When I, when I was first getting into, you know, I have a media company. I have my label and stuff like that. Uh, I do a lot of video and stuff like that, even for my, even just for myself and for small businesses too. Uh, one of the things I try to do was get into um, vehicle photography, vehicle videography, which was going to be drifting, right? Mm-hmm. For those drift kids and, and stuff like that. And I thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool. I can... Uh, sort of move forward and um, take some pretty good images. As a matter of fact, you know, maybe I'll, I'll I'll slip you a clip or something like that if you ever wanted to check it out. Yeah, sure. Uh, of one of the videos I made for a promotional aid for some other guys. Uh, and it was like cinematic quality stuff. The 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 place said they wanted your Instagram followers, your Instagram to see how many followers you have to give you permission to be there. I'm like. You mother, I have a business license, not not just not just an Instagram, but an actual verified business license. Why do you need an Instagram? You need if you that's actually a legitimate business, not somebody just running out of you know, uh, mom, you know mom's garage or grandma's garage or or out of their apartment or something like that. A verified business, but they but they they act like uh, that's uh, not worthwhile, which. Okay, so fine. How about this? I'll say it here and now that I will make the exception that if viewership and enough calls, enough comments, enough uh, inquiries arise to verify that I won't get screwed over by having music on Spotify, I may re- I may entertain that at, at a later date. 
uh, and then just uh, kind of like bulk release everything on there, on there later, which would be kind of fun. I'll just start just unleash the gates because uh, if that, I just don't want to get robbed. And no, I get and, you there. I'm 100% yeah. with you there. I think it's. I think the amount of money that they pay artists is just as it is even before the change was robbery. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause like what, like a, what is it like a 16th of a penny or something like that per stream? Like that's like, <laughs> like that itself is robbery. Like yeah. you might as well, you might as well not be paying me. It's insulting that they, you know, they'd even do that per stream. Like, I, so, yeah. and I you agree. know, I agree. I agree. Um, with you. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't pay. I do think they absolutely should pay. But I'm just saying at that point, it's like they're already almost not even paying people. I don't know what the statistics are. Some people are saying that or not statistics. I don't I don't know what all of the actual changes are. I know some people are saying that uh, people who do get over a thousand streams per month are supposed to be getting paid more than they mm. were before. Uh, and that's why they're doing it so that they can give artists who are actually because the way that they're looking at it i guess is the artists who are getting those amount of streams actually care about doing music as a business and that they're willing to pay those people more and that people that only get like 10 streams a song or something like that they're just like why are we giving these guys any of it we could just get we could just redistribute it to someone else because those people aren't even and i think that was a quote, quote unquote that was the logic that they tried to persuade us with and i see some people defending it and i see some people still being against it because you know what's next you know what, what do they decide eh, well you know you're not really serious if you don't have more than ten thousand streams you know what i mean like like can they keep raising that bar to the point where it's like oh well you know you don't have a hundred thousand streams so you're not really a serious artist you know what i mean there's people out there getting a trillion streams like do you really you know and eventually like how far will they continue raising that bar right now? It doesn't seem like such a big deal because, yeah, if you're only getting 500 streams a song, you're not really getting paid anything anyway. Maybe a few cents a year or something like that. Like maybe a couple dollars a year. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's like uh, um, like inconsequential. Like, I, you know, I, I've given a few dollars away to homeless people just walking down the street. You know what I mean? I've thrown away money on stupid shit that, you know, I bought, I bought like $50 worth of food one night when I was drunk and I ate like half of it and threw the rev the other half away because it ended up going bad in the fridge. You know what I mean? Like I waste money all the time. So I'm not like concerned about the few dollars that I lose off of Spotify. I mean, personally, I don't have any of my own music on Spotify in general because you know, like I, I, for the same reason that you'd want to take yours off of Spotify, I don't really. I've been boycotting them for this shit. <laughs> yeah, you're but the OG. You are the OG of the I've boycott. Been, I've been boycotting them. Yeah. So, um, and, and there's no, there's nothing wrong with that at all, and I agree with that entirely. I think it maybe just took me a little bit more time because uh, at least it was a revenue stream. Yeah. But you know, if you're looking at, I, I just I just look at things just as business. If it's worth my while, I'll do it. If it's not worth my time, not worth my while, I don't want to get booked at venues where they look at my uh, where they look at my Spotify. I would rather put in the work, be able to generate enough revenue and enough uh, viewership to be asked to come to these things, regardless. Yeah. So there's no point in me spending seven eight hundred dollars on a show or more. To open up for somebody who's sitting in a star coach, expecting me, people like me, to pay their way. No, nah, that's okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. I don't. Uh, people would might just chalk that up to arrogance. Uh, I just. I, I chalk it up to business. It's not good business. I believe my music is good enough to 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 get that uh, t that type of of uh, following. So. I don't, uh, and I wouldn't say that out of kind of being a jerk or, 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 or being, oh, well, you know, I know my music is good. I have the, 
um, man, my ego is big and I'm this. No, because I'm the first person that will probably tell you that this this, this sucks. Mm -hmm. Like, all of my music pre... I'll say this. I'll say this live. All of my music to me pre the archive was trash. <laughs> it was a lot of it was just trash, and I'm and I understand I did stuff with other people. That was still the era of uh, uh, the earn your way in and stuff like that, and and all that kind of stuff. And that's and that's cool. The problem is the. Uh, Back then, I, I, I kind of sound like my idols, right? You know what I mean? You know, like when you're first starting out, everybody's starting out. They all sound like their idols. And then people that say, you're a biter, you're a biter. <laughs> like yeah, they just yeah. love that. And then when you go listen to them, they can't, they cannot figure out what a cadence is. I'm going, well, <laughs> what are you whining about? You don't even know what music is. Uh, so I, I just stopped paying attention. I hate comments. <laughs> it's just so stupid to read comments. I like comments. I like the good ones. Yeah. The the hate comments where people are just obviously just shitting on it just because they don't like who did it. I think you explained this to me, right? It's not that they don't like the music. They just don't like who did it. So what am I going to do? That's a big Convince part. Of, that's them? definitely a big part of it. There are people who legitimately don't like the music, but like there's so much music out there that people do not like. Do you think the, what, what makes me, what made me think it has to be the person that's doing it is because are they stopping on every song that they don't like and making a hate comment? I'm sure some do, but like there's got to be people out there that specifically that sit there and be like, I don't like this person that now I'm going to comment. You know what I mean? Because they can't, they can't be hating on everything that they don't like. Cause if they uh, sure, yes, there's probably those people out there, but most people who leave hate comments or do they say someone and they're just like, I don't fucking like that guy. I don't like that girl. I don't like her. I'm going to, I'm going to say some, like, fuck this person. Like, I don't think anyone should like this person. You know what I mean? Because I don't like this person. Um, Yeah, and, and here's a, and you bring up a good point, because why would somebody actively do that? Yeah. I have never once left a hate comment that wasn't deserved. And I mean, to I people who were, <laughs> <laughs> to people who were, were actively coming after me. Yeah. Uh, that was about the only time I ever did it. I never really left a, a hate comment. I had one guy. I remember the first time I started up my other YouTube channel and, uh, you know, I started getting traction. I think this was like around five, 600 subs. And this dude found one of my earliest videos and said, your lighting sucks and your camera sucks. And this is all grainy over here. And I went, okay, at least you're being technical, but you found one of my first videos. You don't even see this was released eight years ago and that was probably four years ago. So it's been a long time. And so I said, okay. I went to his first video and I said, hmm, your lighting sucks. Your angle sucks. Your audio sucks. I said, you don't like it when I come to your first video and do that to you, do you? And he said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I said, yeah, I like your newer stuff. Look at that. You understand this is an old video. You don't just look at old videos and then comment. Like, That's stupid. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I've never actively let, uh, let out a hate comment. There's just I no have, reason yeah. for it. Do the reason why I did it, and I'll explain why I did. It. I can't speak for everybody. Sure. Um, and sometimes it was valid criticisms, but I think other times it was like insecurities about people giving me shit about the music that I liked or that I made, and then being mad like, why do people like this shit that I hate? and not like the shit that I like or like the shit that I make. Like there's artists that I love that I think everyone should love. Why aren't they giving that love to this person instead of the person that I don't like? And um, that was me. Like I said, I can't speak for everyone else. I do think that other people have that and maybe they just don't express that because they don't have the words for it or they just haven't thought that deeply about it. But I did like sit there and like reflect on like, why am I, why have I said those things? And what's also funny is there's a lot of people and I don't do it anymore for one reason, other than the fact that I reflected on it. But the one big reason is that I also realized how small of a goddamn world it is. And I ended up meeting a lot of people that I left hate <laughs> comments on their shit in real life. <laughs> like, like I used to be a Hobson fan, but when I met Joker, uh, 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 
uh, I had to tell him, I was like, yo, like, to be honest, like, I was like a hops and dick writer for a while. And when you dissed him, I was in your comment section talking shit because I was a Hobson fan, but you won me over because you can't not give respect, respect is respect is due because he puts in the work. The videos are great. The music is great. You can't actually hate it when it's that fucking good. And, you know, they get, they did win me over after a bit, but at first I was fucking like seething angry about it. Cause I was a Hobson fan, you know what I mean? So I was, and then, and there's other artists that I uh, and, and the other thing is is I also have the balls to tell people that I talk shit about them them in their comment section and to their face because I'm not gonna pretend like I didn't do that like I'll, every every person that I've ever done that to that I end up me to tell them, um, just because I feel like it's just like a principled thing that I have like uh, when I met uh passionate MC, I told him that I used to troll him in his comment section. Same thing with I told him uh, I said the same thing to Loki. I said the same thing to um. Fuck, who was it? I don't know. There was another artist that I that I met that uh I used to talk shit to. Uh anyways. Um DJ Bless Sutter Kane, that's who it was, because he 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 dissed Necro and I used to be a fucking gigantic Necro fan. So anyways, uh love DJ Bless, by the way. He's cool as fuck. Um, shout out to him. But anyways, um That's why I think people do that. At least a lot of people. Like I said, I can't speak for everyone but i do think a lot of hate comes from a place of insecurity yeah and and uh i did look up some psychology behind that as well uh it's really cool stuff but i want i wanted to get this one thing uh one thing across uh mm -hmm. the reason i never really left any uh hate comments and this was one i got this from a teacher believe it or not from a teacher from back in high school okay he said that uh especially with emails. I think it was, I think it was just getting into emails cause I, I started kind of getting into computers and really liking, you know, getting in there and, you know, messing with them. But, uh, he says, just imagine, uh, anything that you did, you know, if you sent it, wrote it down, whatever is going, if it was put on the, the front page of the paper, what would you think of it? So if I make myself into rich Warren, the, Excuse me, the musical prod, the prodigy, the uh, the, the new Taylor Swift. <laughs> if I'm if I become the new Taylor Swift, and somebody digs up a comment where I say, hey, "You suck, you punk," you know what I mean, and then they put it up on <laughs> on TMZ saying I was a, a real heel back in the day, I would have to answer for it. And at some point, there might be a time when I do have to answer for everybody who's somebody answers for something and yeah. so something i found out very uh in short order was when you do something fantastic people come after you i don't know why i didn't know why and now i'll talk about the psychological part it was a really cool video i found on youtube this guy was explaining uh human uh psychology yeah and their behavior uh a lot of our ancestral what do they call that uh one of those things that, that animals have that are instincts. A lot of our instincts come from being hunters and gatherers, especially males. And when we're doing things like music or something like that, we become a very, if we're good at it, we become a very successful hunter. What ends up happening is the people who are not successful hunters will say really bad things around the campfire to make the, the successful hunters look bad so they won't get ostracized from the camp so it's something that says genetically followed us all the way up to here i'm starting to sound like uh neil degrasse tyson all <laughs> the way up to here <laughs> <laughs> now as as humans we've we've <laughs> we've had these dog brains all these years ago but uh you now we come we come back to now <laughs> we've got monkey brains <laughs> yeah we had fish brains now we have monkey brains uh as, and, and so I think that's where it came from, and it's a really good explanation. And so when you start understanding the, the way to handle these people now, um, when, when like me, I'm a smaller channel. Mm -hmm. I don't have millions of followers. I don't have hundreds of thousands of followers. I'll probably by the end of next year probably see maybe over a 1,000. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Things can go viral. Things might just end up dying in the dirt. You never know. Uh, but there's going to be a lot more push uh, to, to do things. I just can't get into the specifics of it, but I will, I will say this. You're, you're definitely, 
<laughs> you, you're on the right track. <laughs> as far as as far as you know, leaving the the hate comments and stuff like that, and and with uh, the deep seated hatred for somebody else versus somebody else because of the of the bias of favoritism toward that particular person, mm-hmm. it happens all the time. Yeah. So you're not the only one in that, and and nobody can blame you for that. If if I were to meet a fan that uh, said, you know, I didn't like what, you know, they, when people say, well, you cheated on the KOTV, I was going to go, geez, I haven't thought about that in forever. Uh, no, I didn't, and I don't need to show you my bank records, but I can explain to you. I'll, actually, I don't even have to explain anything to you. Listen to my most recent song and then listen to that one and tell me, have I progressed? <laughs> then how in the hell did I cheat? <laughs> because I hate that song bad. I still that think was the one of my dope. worst ones. I think it's a great song still. I I appreciate it. Yeah, you'll never convince me that it's good, but only yeah, because yeah. it's me. Me listening to me. I get yeah, that. It's, it's like that's that that's that weird cringe of like that thing you made back when you were in grade school that just sucked. And and I have some audio recordings of myself singing where I was just like <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was away. I wasn't well, confident. You're that that song is definitely not that, but um you're, the song, the song's great, man. Give yourself some fucking credit. The song's good. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, there was a lot of work that went into the into the mixing of it. That was that was cool though. Uh, that was that was fun. But yeah, man. As far as just stop leaving hate comments, you can li- put a thumbs yeah. down. Or if you need to leave a hate comment, I could say this: If you need to la- leave a hate comment, tell me exactly what you didn't like to hear. Don't tell yeah. me it sucked. Well. Most people, yeah, most people don't have the brain capacity to constructively criticize things. What yeah. I should tell, what I tell people to do is, if you don't like something, block it. Yeah, you'll never see it again. Block Easy. it. Hit uninterested. Hit unfollow. You'll never see it again, ever. And and you're doing better than leaving a hate comment because hate comments will help their algorithm. Because it creates controversy and people will argue in comments and that makes them... Fu- if you don't like something, block them because that fucks with their algorithm. Yeah, because absolutely. Because now they're not getting that comment on. Now they're not getting that like. They're getting one less view next time because it could come up on your thing. But don't watch it. Just leave it alone. Only give credit to things that you do like and help the things that you do like. Because talking shit about the things you don't like does not help the things that you do like. Dude, speaking of, one last thing. Okay, let's <laughs> it's do always it. one last thing. Well, we but, got uh, more to talk about. Yeah, we do. And uh, I just want to just just finish this off by saying this: I've been, I'm done being nice to people too, to a degree. I don't mind giving people their flowers when they need them. Right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, fine. Easy enough. Uh, I try to sometimes. I try to reach out. I've I've tried to reach out to people to kind of. Say, listen, I know what kind of musical world this is, and it kind of sucks because you're you're gonna be alone in it. Um, I'm here if you want to chat, whatever. Maybe you want to work together, maybe not. Maybe we could just shoot the breeze because this is a very this is a this career will 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 make you feel alone badly because uh and not and not in the way of saying oh you know oh, I feel all cut off from my friends. No, as soon as you start achieving more. And doing more, people think you're doing it in spite of them. <laughs> I don't know why people do this, but they do it. They think you're doing it just because of them. No, it's because I want to make money. I'm trying to run a business. I want to make my dream come true. No, no, you're just doing it because you're trying to rub my face in it. When? I don't even, I haven't thought about you in years. You know what I mean? I haven't seen you yeah. in over five. What makes you think? Yeah, so... That's how people will act, and so I noticed that uh, that uh, uh, seclusion kind of comes around, and and people start just kind of uh, ostracizing you from different things. You know, when you first start and you suck, people are trying to be nice to you and say, "I bought your album, yeah, 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 yeah." But then after you start making it, be like, "Who the fuck you think you are?" You know what I mean? You don't. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to get that way with with people. So I try to reach out and try to. Send a funny meme here and there. Try to leave a nice comment on their on their stuff, and you know when I have when I have a chance and and time to. But uh, recently I did that, and I regretted it because they expected me to be their fan. You know what I mean? It's like that thing of, 
well, since you're here, and, uh, and, and you, you can always tell when they're really nice at first, and then they looked at you, looked at my stuff or your stuff, and then they come back and start being, you know, a really, a real ass. <laughs> that's that's ex it's exactly where that ended up uh, going. Yeah, there's so. some there's some people that will take kindness for weakness, and they'll and and you try to be the civil person, and then they'll look at you like a peasant. Yes, and they treat you uh, with this level of like, oh, so you're being nice to me or and they, they 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 treat it like you being kind is like ass kissing meaning that they think that you want something from them but really like they only want you so they can get more views on their music you know what i mean they're entirely fucking projecting yeah yeah and and that's it's it's sort of disconcerting to me because i don't treat people like that uh, I yeah no not at all but there's no. there's there's people on there that I've had conversations with there's people I've talked to about music and tried getting them on the podcast and they're just like you know there's some people there's some people that I just won't, won't communicate with at all because I know exactly how they are just from how they post on social media or of how whatever you know what I mean and it's just some people just aren't worth the fucking trouble yeah and you know? and. And those people should understand that they're leaving impressions of themselves, even though they they, they don't see it from day if to day. They, they understood that they wouldn't be that way, which is why I shut up. There's a really <laughs> there's a really good book that came out. That's why I don't leave bad comments and stuff like that. Just don't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to. I want to yell at people. Trust me when I tell you. I want to call people names. But there's a really good book. It was called "An Artist's Guide to." Uh, the music industry, I think it was, it was Lauren Wiseman was the okay. uh, uh, the author. Really good book. Uh, yeah, that was back in the day when you know doing research was actually you know smiled upon. But uh, when I was working, doing all those eighty hours a week, I was listening to books. So I was kind of going to college because I couldn't afford to go to college, and uh, working at the same time, just feeding my brain and feeding my wallet and myself. Uh, he's got a really famous phrase in there that I've been living by to this day if it hasn't happened yet shut up keep your mouth shut don't tell people about releases don't tell people about don't people tell people about um new music you're coming up with don't tell them about a show that might be happening might be happening i say might or could be and all these other things because when they fall through you're proven a liar yeah so or, when these or, or, or you just look stupid right and i'm i Trust me, I've looked stupid plenty of times. I I've still done it. do it. I've done it. I've put the yep. shoe in my mouth, you know, my foot in my mouth. Yeah. I've sat up there and, and, and promoted stuff that I was saying. I think uh, one of my, I can tell you right now, it's, it was called Light Dark. That project is done. It's gone. It's never coming to, to the light of day. I had the songs all set up. Most of them are already released as something else. So Light Dark is not happening anymore. That's where you see, like, the blood on my face on one side. It's all colored. And on the other side, it's all... Mm gray uh light dark was supposed to be like uh sort of like a a, a, a two-sided mental state for somebody who's mixed like me <laughs> I'm, a, I'm light dark skin you know i'm a i'm a, I'm a lighter dark skin guy so it's kind of a play on words but uh yeah that that project went uh right down to pooper and so uh but i put out all this stuff Oh my God. And I see it and I'm going, Oh my God, why did I say that? Why did I do that? And, and it's always the Facebook memories that pop up I'm like, Oh my God, why did I say that? Delete it, delete it, get it out of my face. I don't want to see it. So yeah. Yeah. Keeping those, your mouth shut. If I can ever say anything for anybody, those Facebook yeah. memories, man, I delete them all. I go, I go <laughs> every, I kid you not every single day. One of the first things that I do in the morning is I click Facebook memories. I go through them to make sure there's nothing stupid. And if there is, I delete it every <laughs> single day. And I've been doing that since 2020. Oh, every really? Day. Why Why 2020 to be specific? Because I had a lot of time during COVID to just okay. be on my phone. So I started going through the memories. Um, but what I noticed is that, you know, let's say February 5th, 2020, some memories show up. I delete them. 
the next year, there was memories on February 5th that didn't show up last year that I have to delete now. <laughs> so you can't trust it that like, oh, it's gone. I, I got everything for February 5th. So now every year I check February 5th to make sure that there's nothing that I want deleted. And sometimes, you know, in 2020, I thought, oh, you know, maybe there was a post that I thought was fine then. But then three years later, I'm like, no, I don't like it anymore. So I'm going back and constantly deleting shit all the time. Man. Perfect. All the so time. So you do it. Yeah. That's Fuck good. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, you know, and then you use it. And I, I'm always afraid, you know, it's always going to be that, that, uh, I've actually had it happen though, where I've said something that was like ridiculous or something. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I like butt texted or something or butt posted. I, when I say that, I mean like, you know, something happened where I was not paying attention or something. I left a comment and I say, what was I even saying? Please. <laughs> Thank God nobody maybe saw that. <laughs> oh gosh, how embarrassing. So yeah, 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 I agree. So what else did you want to talk about, man? I'm curious. Well, I have one more thing about the Spotify oh, sure. that I want to talk about that we just never got. Uh, just because we're just having a conversation, I don't want to interrupt the flow. But uh, the one other thing that I want to talk about is the pros and cons of like of uh, of having Spotify. Because obviously, we talked about yes, promoters and agents like God damn, like to look at Spotify, but um. It is. It's just also very accessible, and like, I struggle with this idea of like, do I put music on Spotify? Because I know everyone's, every, almost everybody uses Spotify for music. Almost everybody does. Not everyone wants to go to my website to download it. Not everyone wants to go and hit YouTube because you can't close the app when you listen to music. You know what I mean? Unless you have YouTube music, but don't you have to pay for YouTube Premium for that? No. Well, see, I don't know, and I don't think most people know how YouTube music works. So they're not you. They're not not everyone is on it. Because so. I'm a I'm a computer guy, so I sit on my PC and I can get all of the YouTube music. But I'm also a YouTube artist, so it might be a little different for me. Hmm. So I'm just like with Spotify. I don't need a Spotify account to listen to Spotify. I have a Spotify account because I'm on Spotify, so I can listen to your podcasts, anything all day. I don't hmm. I don't pay a, I don't pay a cent for it. Uh, again, see, that whole thing of I'm not paying into something for somebody to pay me. So. See, I'm on Spotify because I I do like listening to music, and there, since I have artists on my podcast all the time, the easiest way for me to find the album without having to buy it immediately is through Spotify. So I go there. If an artist does make an album that I really, really like, I will absolutely buy it. Uh, if I don't really, really like the album, I won't buy it because I can't spend 10 bucks on everybody, you know what I mean, for every yeah. single album that they put out. But if I could, I absolutely fucking would. If I could, I would just start a label and sign everyone that I liked, you know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> if I had that kind of money. But I don't have that kind of money. But um, anyways, that's completely off topic. Uh, So I struggle with this concept of do I put my music on Spotify because when it's on Spotify, now it's also on uh, the music when I want to do an Instagram post. So now I can automatically, it connects to Instagram. So now I can put it in my posts. I can put it in my stories. I can put it in my TikTok. I can put it in so many different things on social media that otherwise it wouldn't be there. And I could get so many... It, like, I believe in my music enough. Like, I know I have a, a lot of improvement to do, but I do think I have some good some good tunes that I think could do pretty well with the right, you know, um, type of social media posts and whatnot. You know, and I have the CDs, so I'm doing that. But what I'm missing is the social media um, promotion. And, you know, when we did um the comfortably scum album the new comfortably scum album we posted on spotify like it did pretty well the first like month and a half that it was up uh it's been up for a month now because it came out october 17th before it even became november we had 200 uh monthly listeners just for the comfortably scum album 
just put it up there with like just a little promotion that we had you know what i mean and like that's pretty good for something that i've never posted on there no i'll be it ill temper has a lot of followers uh he's got two thousand something followers on spotify and he has like a lot of views uh or streams through that because um but he also does those king gordy records with the, those even heathen things with king gordy so he gets a lot of views spill over from that so um but because of that a lot of spillover into the comfortably scum so you know there's part of me that thinks like oh well if i had you know the demos and rejects on there i might get more listeners and then therefore maybe more people will check it out and i'm giving you know demos and rejects out for free so maybe i should put it on so i i do struggle with that a little bit like you know and then even joker i was talking to him and he was like, "Where's your, uh, where's your mixtape at? I want to listen to it on one of my jogs." And I was just like, "Oh, I, I got it on CD, and I have it on my website." He's like, "You gotta have it on Spotify." So it's like, I hear mixed things from different people. Like we have this conversation about how we hate Spotify's model, but then there's also other people that are like, "Oh, I want to listen to it. Why isn't it on Spotify?" You know what I mean? And I'm just like, "Fuck." That's yeah. one listen. You know, one more listener I could have had, but because it wasn't on spotify maybe they'll never hear it yeah and here's the here's the thing is I, and I, I don't want to make this mistake which I'm, i might be is um making the mistake of skipping over the people that are closer to me but i also don't want to make them what i base my decisions off of so uh people who are in within arm's length you know what i mean uh such as uh, I don't know. I'll just shout out somebody random. Say David, uh, some Dave, call him little Dave. Uh, he's an, he's an armed reach. And if he, if he says, I want to listen to it on Spotify, I go, you can look at it on Apple music, but, but you can look at it on Amazon. You can look at it on Deezer, Pandora, all those places. Pandora was a pain to get on. Holy no, smokes. I bet. I bet. Dude, Jesus. Uh, but yeah, as far as uh, you can look at all those other places, YouTube. I always post the YouTube link because yeah. that's where that's who pays the most. Uh, I would be wrong for for not uh, shouting them out. So uh, yeah, so that's those are those are the ones I do, and I just say Spotify. Unfortunately, is just not the one I need to go with. Uh, I think they're going to. I know Taylor Swift was famous for keeping her music off of there for a long time. Well, so is the Beatles and some of the other more famous artists. They weren't on Spotify for a long time. I don't even know. I don't know if they're still on there. I haven't. I don't fucking listen to the Beatles ever, but I know for you couldn't find them on there. And I know Eminem, uh, his his publisher uh, sued Spotify even because they were uh, you know violated copyright. Mm -hmm. Same thing they're doing like with my music, which would give me the right to sue unless I sign an agreement saying that I would do otherwise, right? Mm-hmm. So I could say, well, you know, I'd have, <laughs> I'd have nine hundred stream, nine hundred ninety nine streams, <laughs> and you owe me for nine hundred ninety nine streams a month. Uh, and I don't, I just don't want to get to that point. You know what I mean? I don't want, I don't want that fight. I would much rather make more meaningful, spend my time, and energy making more meaningful content elsewhere than focusing on something as stupid and silly as Spotify. Uh, I'm not saying that their service is stupid. I'm saying that the the whole drama behind it sort of a waste of time, and uh, it's easier just to say, ah, forget it. I'm just going to boycott it until it becomes profitable or or an advantage, and then take it take advantage of it. Then, uh, as of as of right now, though, I get uh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as of right now, I, I wouldn't even say here's the, here's the funniest thing. And I know people are just going to eat this up, and that's just how it is in in the music industry because it's a very competitive field. Is it you're going to get a lot of people who are going to say, "Oh, well, you know, well, you just don't like it because you're not getting it streamed." <laughs> I was like, "No, I just explained it to you. I can't be any more clear in saying that I remember what it was like when I first started, and I don't want to take away take. I don't want that to be it's taken away principle. from anybody. Who's it's young. the principle. It doesn't matter if they're only right. paying me." Five t- cents, five cents, or five million dollars. It's the principle of the matter. Yeah, and then uh, theft is theft. Yeah, I, mean, I don't care. And I, I've had people. I've had this one guy. He told me when I work once. Uh, he says, "Yeah, my son downloaded your song. He found it before I could ever find it. He just downloaded. It. He said he downloaded it off of YouTube." I'm like, "You just told me you just commit intellectual property theft, but it's okay. He's a kid. 
<laughs> and it's on there for free anyway, so you might as well just use it. I'm just hoping to get the subscriber and uh, because uh, that ad revenue pays way more than than Spotify ever did. So. Yeah. Final thoughts on that. I have a couple questions. Sure. <clears throat> Four questions to be in fact, uh, to be exact. Awesome. One, I guess one of them's one of the questions is kind of like a two-part question, and it's so. First question is: Is it cheaper to opt out of Spotify on like the Showcase or something like that? Do you get a discount, or is it the same price across the field? You pay the same. See, that kind of bugs me. You know, what yeah, I mean? like it kind of bugs me. It's like <laughs> you can opt out of something, but like you still have to pay the same amount. And also, just in fact, like I think. Why can't you just upload to Spotify directly? Why do you need a middleman? I think it was because that would be a handler. So in, you don't need it for it, YouTube. Why is it everything else but not YouTube? YouTube, you could do it by yourself. But everything else, you need a middleman. And you have to pay the middleman, of all things, to do it for you. You have to pay the middleman to be on YouTube Music, too. Uh, oh, okay. Now you can upload directly to your own YouTube for sure, but as far as uh, a handler like that, the it's just a, it's like the same thing as buying a car. You have to go through a dealership instead of just going through the the automator automaker. Uh, in this case, I think it has to do. See, I don't know the inner workings of every one of these places, uh, databases and stuff like that, but if these aggregates is what they're called, they're called an aggregate. Uh, when you put your song up on there, it goes to this, 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 and right, and kind of you can put it all in, in in one place, and it keeps it organized. I think it is to, it is a barrier, and it's a part of a and probably a fair, fair music act or something like that. I think there was an act or a law that was put into place to make it so that those people would get their dividends and paid, and and, and get get and get paid, in a way to do it. A lot of those places, uh, like DistroKid, wants your social security number. I don't know that I'd be too happy with giving my social security number to Spotify, right? You know what I mean? All those other places. So Spotify can probably it's it's in it, and I imagine the root of all of this is taxes. Yeah, IRS and shit like that. Yeah, keep uh, keeping it, track of the numbers. I so keep it clean. It'd probably be easier for like the IRS to just hit up DistroKid and. Be like, hey, give us all the numbers instead of hitting up everyone individually. Right. I guess and that makes they, sense. And then they have autofill, you know, autofill forms for 1099s and, and W9s yeah, and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So that would, I think those are the people who can handle that particular, that model. Whereas Spotify has to maintain this server where, what did they say? Uh, what was it? Almost like 1,000 songs released a minute or something like that? Yeah, it's something it's, crazy. It's something it, insane. Yeah, so they have to maintain this data server. I wouldn't want to be in looking at getting a CSM for that. But the thing uh, is, is like YouTube can handle it, Facebook can handle it, TikTok can handle it with people uploading content, and videos arguably way more data space. Why can't Spotify handle it? You know, and, and... Spotify is not a tech giant. I don't think it, it, they, they they don't classify as trill like probably billion to trillion dollar industries. They if you think about be, it, they have to be a billion dollar industry. Spotify, they have, man. yeah, they have to be. And and I know the owner takes away a lion's share, but um, YouTube is Alphabet, so Alphabet company. They you ever you ever see they're publicly traded and stuff like that. Alphabet aren't they, company. They're, they're Google, aren't they? Aren't they owned by Google? Google and it's called Alphabet. It's, it's oh, listed in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. So that. Uh, Google and Facebook, they're you know, Facebook doesn't even have. I know they try to do satellites at some point, but they they failed miserably with that. But they're not even as big as Google. Um, no, yeah, Google, I think the only Google's one who's, definitely bigger. But I think Google's bigger than Elon Musk. Like to that to that extent, because they 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 have to own data server. The thing facilities. is, is, there's no like. Is, I don't think they're 
I don't know much about Google's like ownership, but I, do. I don't. Th- if Google is itself worth more money, I don't think there's one person at Google that's worth more money than Elon Musk. If, the, if that makes sense. No, it's Google itself, the entity itself, and they yeah. can't because they're publicly traded. I think they, yeah, they can't that... own that much. But uh, no, I let me let me get on my Neil deGrasse Tyson. So if you think about it, these warehouses, the size of football fields are all hosing are all holding uh what do they call uh, d- uh servers all these different like hard drive services and, and all of this memory and storage there's actually facilities i think one of them's in texas they've got yeah. one in texas and georgia and they you know they got almost i think they're trying to aim for one per state uh all of that stuff has to be maintained and so with them owning that much real estate and that much data that's not just videos it's stuff everything on the internet they're almost the internet at this point yeah. so you know they they i think they're they're a whole lot bigger and i'm I'm pretty sure aren't they the, one of the main ones that hooked up the cable there's actually a cable that goes between the united states and uh europe Did yeah you know that, that? that that fucking cable that the sharks attack in the middle of the ocean oh they oh they actually attack it yeah apparently there's can you pull that up tom yeah um Apparently, there are sharks that attack the ocean cable that try to, uh, uh, they bite at it for some reason. I don't know why. Sharks attack ocean internet, internet cable. Yeah, it's on slate.com. I don't know if this is a reliable source, but it says the global internet is being attacked by sharks. Google confirms. And there's a picture of it. This is a shark biting the cable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm sure there's, if that's not a reliable website, there's got to be a reliable, reliable website on it. But yeah, the sharks like to eat the internet, I guess. They, they're looking for porn and memes. They must be able to, to pick it up with their little feelers and stuff in their face. That's got to be it. That or... I mean, it's like, the same. You know how like. Oh, look at that! Oh man, I got a camera battery warning. Let me uh, let me change that. I'll talk to you. But yeah, hold on, just a second. let me drop. This. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Let's swap that. You'll, uh, you'll, battery you'll just the 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 thing is going to continue, but it'll, what it'll do is it'll just cut out into black for a minute. But um, you know how like dogs, like if they're left alone, will chew on shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think sharks are the same way. I think that the sharks just see something that is like, fuck, dude, like, I gotta chew on that. There we go. Perfect. You know, that, that. Makes, that makes sense, right? Yeah, I think, uh, I think what it, what it probably is, uh, what it boils down to, sure. And, and they're, they're still wild animals. They're not gonna grasp the concept that something is gonna probably hurt when they bite it. So, I mean, they, they're, yeah. I don't know. Do sharks do sharks eat crustaceans? Because if they do, then they know the concept. I'm of sure. Pain. I'm sure sharks eat anything they can get their fucking mouth on that won't kill them. And even then, they'll probably remember Jaws where they open up that belly of the shark and there's like a license plate and like a fucking bicycle helmet <laughs> and all this sort of shit in there. You know what I mean? Um. Right. Anyways, I I still have those couple other questions before we move yeah. on to like um, I think we had a couple other things on the list, but um, how do you feel about like SoundCloud or uh, Bandcamp. Bandcamp, I thought was pretty much a a dead horse. Uh, but SoundCloud, I think, is falling to the wayside too. I just don't know. Uh, I'm not super caught up on on all of the different dif- different streaming services and who does what to where. Um, I should be, but with somebody who's trying to run all of the financial aspects and doing all of this stuff myself it's really hard to keep up with it all so if i had some like you know a teenager that's how i figured out about skib- skibbity toilet <laughs> i'm still i'm still toilet i'm trying to keep up with all this stuff but the skibbity toilet came up and i was just like what is going on you know i figured out where is this even coming from? why is there a toilet that's singing i got i got um, some skibbity toilet knowledge to drop on you too Oh boy, that's gonna be not awesome. really knowledge, but just comments. But sure, but yeah, as far as uh, as far as that goes, I think um, uh, I know SoundCloud people want SoundCloud to work, so I think they're gonna stay there, especially artists. The problem is, I don't want to be anywhere where I'm getting artists' eyes. I don't 
artists are not my audience. Yeah, kind of, kind of like why fucking. Well, that's why Reverb Nation failed. Yes, because it's, it's nobody who's a listener goes to Reverb Nation. Have I gotten an? I, dude, I, I, I as of twenty twenty, I remember still getting emails from Reverb Nation. I don't know if I still get them or not. I I, I have them on some other email that I don't use anymore. But wow. I haven't used re- actually. I think I even found my Reverb Nation within the last year and deleted it. Actually, if anything, um, God, I don't even remember the password. You know, Bandcamp <laughs> just got bought by a new company. I don't, I forget what company it was. Some, it's some, some big company. Um, so, and, and then they laid off like half the workers at Bandcamp. Uh, so I, there's some big changes coming there, but during quarantine, I think they were really promising because they were giving artists a hundred percent of all the money they sell. So I think that like for a while they were worthwhile. And I know that there's people out there who are fans that, um, will still buy on Bandcamp. Um, uh, uh, shout out to Nathan nathan robin he he's one of those people that will buy off there and i know there's other people who will as well um well yeah i got him on my facebook too he seems like a nice guy he's a really nice guy he's, he's, really got, nice he's guy. got he's got good memes his memes are his memes are fucking dang dude song um, trader song trader i guess bought them i just uh looked it saw up tom sent it to me song trader officially re- acquires Bandcamp from epic games yeah um that makes sense that makes sense yeah. So anyway, who's who knows what they're going to look like in the next two years? You know, I mean, five years even. I know a lot of people who still use it and they do make some money off of it still. And, you know, it, it, it's the same reason why the same thing. That, well, I have a website, so I kind of Bandcamp kind of defeats it. But if you are. I don't know, I don't know how to feel about Bandcamp. There's part of me that wants to be on there. And there's part of me that's like, I'd rather just people go to my website. I just need to find a way to get people to my website more frequently. Um, but like one of the nice things about websites like that, that you could just sell an album directly is that even if I only sell 10 records a year, I'm still making way more money than Spotify would ever pay me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, SoundCloud. There are some people who tell me that they actually look and find music on SoundCloud. So I, I and I've I've seen that in comment sections on uh uh on TikTok even where they're like oh man like I heard your song on SoundCloud like I found you on SoundCloud it's so crazy I found you on TikTok now and then not not me personally but just you know because I whenever I see stuff that interests me on um on TikTok I'll click the comment section just because I want to know like is anyone thinking what I'm thinking you know what I mean because I always watch a video all the way through and then I think a thought. And think, how original is this thought? Mm-hmm. And I click the comment section and I look, and like nine out of ten times, it's not an original thought. You know what I mean? Like someone else thought this exact thing, and I can find someone thinking this because we're all human beings. We all have only so much that we could really think and say in the world. Um, but there are occasionally those ones where I see, oh, they, you know, the SoundCloud, SoundCloud, SoundCloud. So I do know that there are people who use SoundCloud, and I I, I know this musician chick that I, I I talk to occasionally, and she's like, "Oh, are you on SoundCloud?" And I'm like, "No." And she's like, "Oh, you need to get on SoundCloud. There's a lot of people who are on SoundCloud." And I'm just like, "And like, there's a lot of I guess there are a lot of kids who use SoundCloud still." Yeah, I've I've heard that same thing, and I was always wondering about that whether or not it was accurate, uh, because everybody that has ever told me to go look at somebody else's SoundCloud. Uh, never has any more than about a hundred followers, and yeah, I mean, I used to be on SoundCloud, but I think SoundCloud's revamped and gotten bigger. I don't know if that's true, but I, from the last couple times that I've looked at, I deleted is all my old sound, all the old SoundCloud accounts that I could get into. I deleted them because it was all my old music shit, like when I went by half wit and conceptual lyrics. But I don't know. I just wanted to pick your brain and see what you thought about those. Yeah, uh, as far as I I figure Bandcamp. I think you're you about hit the nail on the head with Bandcamp. I think Bandcamp is a uh, is the service if you can't if you don't have a website 
and you want to be able to sell your music to your friends or people that you've met in town, Bandcamp is a place to do that. The people who follow you on your Facebook now because you played whatever dive bar. I think that was a, that was a good place and good practice for that particular uh, for that particular avenue. Mm-hmm. For now, SoundCloud is is definitely I think uh, uh, I I haven't been there in a while, but uh, I noticed that it was popular amongst the ooh, four or five years no six years ago it was popular amongst the uh, eighteen uh, sixteen to twenty one year old crowd. So well, if, it was it was popular to that crowd ten years ago. I mean, I mean, when I first got on SoundCloud, I was in high school still. Jeez, ten years ago, I remember what I was doing ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> ten years ago, I was just starting to build this from the ground up. So, I think, matter of fact, ten years ago, this up here. This uh, my old Hughes and Kettner Grandmeister 36. Yeah, good luck finding one of those. Um, uh, that was my first major purchase. Oh man, I was, I was unstoppable. I knew I never knew everything, except for, I didn't realize that making it louder didn't make you play better. <laughs> I had to actually, <laughs> <laughs> it just made you suck louder. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and the worst part about it was I didn't even have a cabinet to hook it up into. Yeah. But, uh, again. One of the things I try to stress to people is, dude, I'm here in case you, you if you need some help, you know, as far as talking, you know, about some of the stuff. And I made the mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. That's why I'm able to tell you, oh, this is what happens. This is what happens. This is what happens. It's not because I'm being a jerk. It's because I'm telling you I made those mistakes and it sucks. And you don't want, I don't, I, I try to maybe save people the embarrassment of uh, having to, to listen back to know that they were making those mistakes and people were just like going, yay, you're good, man. You're, you're a good artist. And then they're just like, Oh man, if you, if you knew, cause they were going ah, 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 on the microphone instead of using auto tune <laughs> or using too much auto tune. Uh, yeah, God. Yeah. Don't get me started on auto tune. Matter of fact, I started using it a little bit more, but only, only in the place of Melodyne. Melodyne, to me, it was too hard to use. It sucked. You ever tried using Melodyne? No, I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, let me know when you're ready. I will introduce you to the world <laughs> of pitch correction. I'll okay, give you some. Okay. Uh, I'll give you some some quick tips. Uh, yeah, it's like what we were talking about. Uh, one of the things I give I get asked a lot is about compression, and I try to tell everybody, you know, just imagine that you're driving around a car, right? What are your car? You're going to, what's going to be your car? Your car is going to be your, your lyrics. You want them to flow smoothly, ride smoothly in the song, right? Then you need to adjust the shocks. How do you do that? With a compressor. Dude, this battery's dying too. Ooh, gosh. Um, let me, let me get a, a little cable real quick. I'll, I'll fix this. So yeah, give ahead. me, give me just a second. Yeah, no worries. Time. Wow. Two batteries, two for two. I, I I think I forgot to charge that set because I used the cinema camera instead. Mm. All right. Sorry about that. What time are we running up right about now? Two hours. Oh, okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Um. We were talking about um. I had four questions, okay. and then I got that phone call, and it fucking threw me off. Uh, between the phone call and the alcohol, I'm <laughs> so uh, there was SoundCloud, the uh, Bandcamp question. That's two, and then there was what was the first one? Uh, I think you were asking. Uh... It was about the, the whether or not it costs the same. Right. Okay, so fuck, what was the fourth one? It was how do you sleep at night knowing that you've not provided your fran- your fans with every avenue possible of listening to your music? <laughs> I mean, I sleep perfectly fine, but like no. you know, I do weigh these questions in my head. 
rather regularly. Um, I don't. I do because I'm I'm always just trying to expand this shit. You know what I mean? Oh sure. Well, who wouldn't? I mean, it's it it's only it's somebody. Somebody who's taking a risk, like again, um, I think I, I think didn't I explain it in that post that there would only be a few factors. No, that was the other recording, so I didn't post that one. Uh, there would only be a few factors that would make me switch over to do uh, join back into Spotify. Mm-hmm. And one of them, yes, is that. And if I do end up getting picked up by a label, I just don't really want that. The uh, labels are loans, big business loans, unless they had the team to work with, which. You know, we can talk about four albums or something like that. If basically, if I'm not seeing the right amount of numbers, it's not worth it. What's the point? I would rather have a, I would rather get a signature loan for $10,000 and make a couple of videos that I know can make me 50,000, pay back the 10 and then take that 50, put it back into videos, make a hundred. You see what I'm saying? Why would I go with a $2.5 million loan and then try to have to pay all that back? No, thanks. No. Well, the okay. idea of the loan is, this is the idea. And this is the, I- not just the idea, but the ideal situation of when you get a loan like that. Is you get, let's say, $3 million deal. Let's just throw a number out there. $3 million deal, a record label deal. You get that, and... You know, you get all the publicity and all this, this and that. And you're like, okay, well, how do I pay this back? You're like, okay, well, I need to, you know, they got to take the streaming revenue. They're going to take some of my merch revenue. They're going to take this, this and that. And uh, CD sales, they're going to take some of that. And you're just like, fuck, okay, I got to figure out how to pay this back. Because when you have that $3 million, that $3 million doesn't just go to making your album and your music videos. Because like, realistically how much do you think you can make like a professional album with like you could probably make a professional album for like fifty thousand dollars it just depends on what what the requirements are but i agree i mean if if you're not yeah yeah, fifty thousand dollars some music videos maybe another twenty fifty thousand dollars um and then promo on top of that which uh, you would think that that's included with the deal but not every deal is made equally so let's say you have to cover your own promo Another, you know, however much you want to throw into promo. Uh, if you're making a movie, for instance, if you make a movie for a hundred million dollars, then you spend about a hundred million dollars promoting it. So, you know, when you see a movie and they say their budget for making the movie was three hundred million, they spent three hundred million promoting that motherfucker. Uh, best believe it. Um, it's always like, so 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 really, when they when you see a movie, it's worth three hundred million dollars. It's really worth six hundred million dollars because. They don't tell you how much they spent on marketing, but that's r- usually the rule. Is it's it's double, you know, um, or it, it, <clears throat> so. However much you know, you spent a hundred thousand dollars making the album and the videos. You want to spend about a hundred thousand dollars promoting it. I'll just, I don't know if it applies the same. Maybe you could spend more, but I'll just say that. Just use that math. You got three million dollars. You spent about two hundred thousand dollars making and marketing the album and the music videos. Um. <clears throat> That leaves you a lot of money to like buy a house, buy a car, you know, whatever the fuck you want to do with it for living expenses. So you don't have to work a job while you make all this shit. Um, and I got the, and I got this concept from uh, Everlast. He was on the Joe Rogan experience and he was talking about back in the day he'd get a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar deal and he would spend about. Fifty thousand to like one hundred thousand dollars making the album and he would live off the rest of it while he was making it you know um so you know however that math translates today i don't know exactly what a record deal looks like today in today's age but um so you got to figure out how do you make that money back because it is a loan it is absolutely a loan so you know like you said the streaming royalties all these things kind of go back to the label until you break even and you're living off the rest of that money you know you still got maybe a couple million dollars to live off of it uh, so you don't have to worry about it as much. But there's other things that you can do. You can get brand deals. You do commercials. You do other things like that. And they pay you extra money. And then that goes back into the fucking, you know, the the label that gives you the loan. See, that's where a lot a lot of these, like, label, uh, these, like, uh, like the Travis Scott burger deal. He got paid. I'm sure that money went back to paying the fucking record labels. You know what I mean? Uh, um, 
there was this uh chip company that had like like wrappers on it. There was like a a, a, a Cardi B pussy chip and shit like that. It wasn't pussy chips, but it tasted like pussy to me because it was like uh, um a uh, truffle butter flavored and it just reminded me of the way that like musty pussy tastes. But um <laughs> love those Ooh, chips. Come get my truffle butter. <laughs> <laughs> chips are great by the way. I miss those chips. But anyways, Ooh, but <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> but there was other flavored chips. I think there was like a little bee chip and some other other you know there was Amigos chip and stuff like that. And I'm sure those Whatever company made those, or maybe some rapper had something to do with it, but whoever made that, I'm sure, paid for the likeness of all these different artists, and that money went back to either right to their pocket or to paying the labels, you know what I mean, one or the other. But you do different deals like that. Like, you sell your likeness to Fortnite so they make a skin out of you so you can pay back labels, you know what I mean? <laughs> Shit like that. That's where you start making the money back because you're famous already. And companies will come to you and be like, hey, like, we want to use your likeness to help sell our brand. And that's where you start, you know, basically selling out. And and it's not really selling out. It's making sure that you pay the labels back so they don't <laughs> fuck you, you know. Yeah. And and they'll still do it because they'll they'll just promote somebody who's, uh, you know, uh, skinnier, blonder, whiter. Well, <laughs> that is true <clears throat> but that, you can ask big machine about that one well i also heard that a lot of times like other than them keeping your masters and repossessing a house that you might have bought or something like that like artists don't like go to jail for never paying back those loans you know what i mean like that never happens like they, they might repossess your shit and they'll keep your masters but like you don't ever really get in trouble for that. You know what I mean? Like you don't ever get in trouble for not paying back those studios. Right. Usually, usually just end up really poor. And, uh, you know, yeah. all those, all the brand deal, because none of you, basically all their money is just gone. Sure. Easily. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the people who, uh, I think, I, I really think that's the same way with the people on hell's kitchen. And uh, I don't have any proof of that because you notice those businesses never really stay in business. And uh, Wait, what is Hell's Kitchen? Oh, like was that like the Gordon Ramsay shit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. They get okay. like a brand new kitchen. It's almost like pimp my ride. Okay. I was like, there's a few of the businesses that stick around, and I think most of them just get the new stuff, and then they like hawk the business immediately. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they say they signed a uh, D. Uh, what do they call it? Yeah, not DNR. It's do not resuscitate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? Yeah. <laughs> or Department NDAs? of Natural Resources. Yeah, NDA. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they probably signed an NDA. But I know uh, Shark Tank is a lot like that, too, because they at least they discussed the deal uh, abroad. But it's still kind of fake, but not really. Because you don't see all the paper signing that happens afterwards. You only get the uh, the little bit that, that they show you where, you know, they say, you know, was your customer acquisition caused and blah, 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 you know, all the fun stuff. But uh, yeah, as far as as far as record labels and businesses go, that would be the only reason why I think I would probably go back on Spotify, unless they change something or again it becomes uh, more fruitful. Where I would say, if there were, if I got emails or in the comments, if I got like over a hundred comments, thousand comments. Maybe somewhere around that neighborhood where I'm like saying, dude, it's getting to the point where it's getting to be ridiculous how many people are asking. And then finally make, make an announcement saying, therefore, okay, this is what's going, this is what's happening. It's now worth, it's now worth my time doing that. Uh, but yeah, paying the same and not doing it is sort of still a great big back, big, big fat F you, but it still comes with, uh, in this case, DMCA stuff. So I don't mm -hmm. want anybody stealing stealing my uh, content yeah yeah so no i the masters are important and having rights to your shit and not having your house repossessed is important too you know what i mean like, those are all very important things that's <laughs> true so yeah. oh, you're doing a thugnificent <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um Booty no. butt, booty butt, cheeks. <laughs> booty butt, booty butt. <laughs> you used to love that. Yeah, I forget what artist it was. There was an artist. It was um, like I I want to say it was like Fat Boy Slim or or um, 
it wasn't big pun, but it was one of those it was one of those it was one of those rappers that had um not big in their name, but like like their name was a play on the fact that they were like large boys. Um fat, I should say. Ooh. Um I forget who it was, but he went bankrupt like ten times going through all these different deals, houses, you know, repossessed, cars repossessed. Because he kept getting these deals, and then um, I can't remember exactly what artist it was, so I don't know if it was one of the other ones that I, I named. But uh, no, like my, maybe his name was Big Boy. Maybe it was Big. Is there an artist named Big Boy? I don't remember. But um, anyways, he. I remember watching some YouTube video about it or something like that. How he went bankrupt like ten <clears throat> ten different times before uh, he finally got out of the hole. Because I know that happened to T Pain. I'm sure that did, but it was not, that, that, he's yeah. definitely not the one that I was thinking about. There no. was someone specific no. that um, was like Fat Boy or Big Boy or something like that. Um, Wait a minute. How do I remember that name now? Big Boy! Yeah. It might have I been think, that. Yeah. And I, I think this was back... If you're, if you're talking about this, I'm thinking it's probably around the uh, Live Wire or, yeah, Lime Wire. No, he was definitely right. one of the artists that was like big, like either late '90s or early 2000s or some shit like that. Like, okay, it was definitely one of those artists, which is like when everybody was... did the echo chamber, big boy, big boy, yeah, stuff like that. You know yeah. what I mean? And when everybody was uh, shouting out their names at the beginning of songs. Yeah. Holy smokes, that dates us now. Jesus, we need to bring that back every time I get on this. So y'all, bitch boy. R W Dark Hillbilly South Side. I, I still do that shit. You do? Yeah. I know. Uh, I know. Ritz. Did Ritz do it? I think he did. I think he did do a Ritz bitch on my on my. I, mean, I don't. I don't do it on every song, but like on um. What was it? There was a couple songs on my mixtape where I was like Zach Meister, or I said Comfortably Scum, or I said. Um, you know, whatever, you know, I, I, I do that shit, but I grew up on that kind of rap. That's why I still do it. You know what I mean? Like, um, is it a little played out? Sure. But if someone's streaming it, you know, just on a random shuffle, I'd want them to hear it at least. Um, I don't know. To me, it's just like, a, it just feels like the thing to do still to me. You know, I, I know fucking rappers nowadays don't do that anymore, but I got a question for you then. Yeah. Where do you prefer your credits? Like the whole directed by or something like that. Do you prefer it in the front? Like if you're watching a music video, because uh, I know I started putting in credits to show who's the director and stuff like that. And who's I think starring. it depends on the video. I guess. Yeah, because I've started doing that more and more. And I think uh, I think I like it because. It seems like not only is it a little bit more professional, uh, it's a little more straightforward, and I kind of like getting it out of the way that you're going to expect something good when I do it. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. almost like a, it's going to be a, a trademark thing. So I think I'm going to start doing that from now on. Now, you watch. You watch. There's going to be four or five other MFers that's going to be ready to do the same thing now that I said that. Watch. You're well, going to see him, too. You know I'm not lying. I know. You're not lying. You're not lying. <laughs> so the reason why I say it depends on the video is because not every video is exactly the same. I am still kind of stuck in the era of, like, MTV. Remember, like, remember, like in the corner, <laughs> yeah, the cor was... there's that cord, the corner text where it's, like, the name of the artist, the name of the song, the name of the label, the name of the, the you know, whatever. Like, I'm still stuck in that era where it, like, pops up in the corner. And then there's also the YouTube era where it, like, it like uh either flashes on screen or pan uh, not pan but uh, uh fades in and out and stuff like that and it just depends entirely on what's going on with the song cuz a song a song that's going to be mostly performance shots and it has like especially if it has a long intro like i i think it should have all of the credits in the beginning because people might not even sit through the entire thing with the long intro um the long intro and all of the logos <laughs> yeah i mean i mean okay first of all if you're an artist out there try not to make a music video with a long intro cut the intro out don't put 10 five five to ten different logos in there put like maybe a couple things in there and just 
get right into the fucking action especially if it especially if your music video is just performance shots because like performance shots are great but like there's artists out there that i love whose every single video they put out is performance shots every single video and it gets old it gets old when every video is just performance just them rapping at the camera you know what i mean and um it's true they don't tell a story anymore yeah, well, that's the other thing that I was going to say. If there's a story, and if the credits in the beginning are going to interfere with the cinematography, it's better to have the credits at the end. Because the cinematography in those cases is what's most important. Because it is a piece of art, you know what I mean? You know, the most uh, the most impressive video that I've seen to date that uh, really kind of blew me away was... Uh... Not one that you'd expect either, because it's it's usually you know, like oh well you know it's somebody big, mm-hmm. but no it's a it's this uh these folks called the Who. I know the Who. I don't. Yeah. Know, I've never seen any of their music videos. Though, I'll say that. Jesus, they were good. They were good, but yeah. And then uh, I remember there was a one of the things that I never really noticed it before until it was brought to my attention, and I I saw it on. Uh, a video Joker made. Uh, <laughs> he was talking about it. <laughs> he was talking about it because he was critiquing one of the disses that he got from, uh, I think it was Playboy the Beast. And uh, it was the fun. I don't think you'll find the video back up there anymore. So I think that's gone. Well, he, uh, yeah. I-, I should say he had me um, not, what is it? Hide? What is the hide videos? Is that what it was uh, called? Private no, them. you're not. Yeah, privating and and, and uh, uh, what do they call it? unlist them. Unlist them. That's the term. I, that's it. He had me go on there and unlist almost everything on there. Well, and and to be and that's that's fair. You, you no you, no absolutely. I I delete and un, unlist shit on my YouTube all the time. That's why I used to have way more videos on there, and then I unlisted or deleted a lot of them. Um. But- but to me, it was the funniest thing because he got out there. He said, uh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> he said, okay, one logo. Next, two logos, three logos, four logos. He's like, he's like shouting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was logo yeah. after logo after logo after logo. And I saw, uh, it's like the more, the more, uh, trap, the more hood, uh, that they're getting the more like you'll see like the fake flames and the weird you know yeah. the, the, and the, the logos and bullet like, holes geez. and shit on the screen and stuff like that yeah do that after like yeah. when the the uh did I what didn't I call it only king the one that won the uh, the KOTB uh the, something like that yeah yeah I think it was only king that one only had my uh, little insignia and then it moved over uh, into the video and then afterward showed uh all i think was studio stereo 27 or something like that it's really cool guys out of europe i don't i'm i'm probably not gonna use them anymore because uh unless it's for lyric videos i really i really like their work with lyric videos um i met them on fiverr some of the really nicest guys you'd ever want to meet uh but yeah i think uh i think i'm gonna stick with doing the live performance stuff visuals and stuff like that i mm-hmm. i like that a whole lot better the the lyric videos can do okay but for a lot of people will read they'll read facebook posts they'll read articles about people they like but they're not going to read your music video well this is what i feel about the lyric videos lyric videos are more engaging than just thumbnail throughout the whole song that's true that's true. That's that's it. That's it. It's more engaging. That's the only thing. Will it engage everybody? No, but there will be people who will sit there and listen and watch the lyric video. Sure. There, I've I've noticed with more, more often than not, even with bigger bands, you will see that they're short, even just in promotion alone. And not even with anything else other than just like an explanation of a song gets more views than a lyric video ever will. 127,000 likes on a on a short. Well, let's just 30,000 views. What we've learned today in today's internet 
low effort content just in general gets a lot of views still you could just take naruto video just take n- n- clips from naruto and other animes clip them together maybe cut put a couple different transitions and cuts and, this, and, the, and like negative effects on it sometimes and just put some like a filter on it people will watch that like you know how many rappers are out there that do anime videos where it's just shots of anime some lyrics and they get millions of views really yes holy smokes i mean yeah i'm not talking people do that it, shit. here's the it, the naruto stuff is it naruto or naruto i don't fucking care <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> i never watched i never watched it don't care what it's called naruto 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 hey. But I mean, it's true though. Like anime, anime music videos are huge, especially. There we go. I will say this: it's especially big in like the trap metal scene and 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 emo rap scene. It's like like the little peeps and the ghost mains and the suicide boys and the corpse husbands and all those dudes. They all use like anime music videos, and you know, and they sure. get millions of views though. Some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And. uh I don't, uh, I, I guess that's cool. I, I know King Vader does like live action anime now. It's, it's cool. I like it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's really interesting stuff. I just, you know, that's, that's again, we go into the arts. I like the arts a little bit more. I like cinematography. I like arts. That to me is just like copy and paste and cheaping out. That's just my mm-hmm. opinion. Uh, don't shoot me for it. You know, don't, uh, don't, shoot, don't shoot the messenger, man. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to live day by day. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't yeah. need any. I don't need machine gun fire and dodge all them bullets. No. As far as as far as that goes, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't do uh, anime videos anytime soon unless I had a specific. Gmoski did it right. He had an anime drawn up with his little guy, his little his yeah. little cartoon character. Well, that character. was that was an original animated video, not an anime video. That's the difference. But look, animated me. It was good. Well, the the, well, the, diff- the difference the spirit is bomb. Uh, no, yes, that was a fucking. It was fantastic, but the thing is, yeah. is it was animated because it was an original animated video. Anime videos take pre-existing popular animes, edit the clips of like fight scenes, put lyrics on it of the song, and then the song in the background. Yeah, That's what, you know, I'll, I'll have to send you a couple examples of what these look like. But um, I've seen a couple, but but they I think get popular. You, you probably know better ones. Like well, they get the more, popular. The yeah, the more popular ones, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I've seen it all over Fiverr. The people were offering that that particular service, and I was going, well, yeah, well I know you know there's oh. artists like like Nikki Synth was really into that shit, and then uh, uh my homie uh, T Lolly Rot wants to do one of those anime videos and shit. Like, like I know people in that scene that will do that shit. Personally, like I don't hate it, but I also don't want the copyright infringement issue involved. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you, yeah, that's bad. That's international copyright at that. Yeah. Good God! And especially with the way foreign trades are going, that's not good. Uh, yeah. Japan, Japan, you're not gonna have a problem. <laughs> Korea, not gonna have a problem. But I think Taiwan's gonna start being an issue. But I think they just yeah. started making friends with with uh, South Korea, which is unheard of. That's why Taiwan? we thought we all, yeah. I think it was Taiwan. Well, well or... I th- I think that would make sense though, because isn't Taiwan kind of like trying to be independent of China, and then China wants them back? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but I think Taiwan and South Korea did not get along for a while. Well, uh, let's just be fair. From my understanding, a lot of Asian countries do not get along. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that way ever since they were throwing around sharp sticks. It's <laughs> like, true, it's like true. <laughs> where we go right back to square one with this conversation. The monkeys have always hated monkeys. Yeah, let's, 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 let's be fair. If you live 50 miles away from one area, you probably don't get along very well. Um I don't even like my neighbors. I mean, I don't. I'm not gonna go and <laughs> I'm not gonna go and take their own. I'm not gonna take their house from them and I might of their family. I might. I might take our neighbor's house if we could. <laughs> if it was, just, just pee it was... on it. It'll be fine. It'll be yours. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. The anime music videos. Man, it's just... well, how did we get to this? There was some. We were, <laughs> we were about talking something specific. About... Yeah, we're talking about uh, music videos and stuff like that, and I was going to—I uh, was actually going to move move on to some, uh, to this. Yeah, and ask yeah, yeah you, go ahead. 
Uh, what would be your next music video if you were to make one? I want to. I'm curious. It's like one on your own. What would kind of be your concept if you were to to make one and had an idea? I have so. What, would, what was something that you would like to do that you would have a budget for? Even if you a small budget, big budget doesn't matter. I don't think nobody in my interviews that I've seen with you talking to anybody has ever asked you what you wanted to do. I want to know. I mean, I've had different music video ideas that could be fun. Like that, I had one where uh, a professional would go into, like, um, for those of you who don't know who the professional is, it's my musical mascot. Like, if you look at all my artwork with the 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 guy at the plague doctor mask and the hat and the um, trench coat that and the gun that's the plague that's the professional, uh, possibly a working title that might change in the future. But I know that's the name of my next album. Um, uh, I had this idea where he would walk into uh the original idea. This is my original thought. It's still a work in progress. I might change. It a bit depending on if i ever even do this video where the pro- professional walks into like a uh like an opium den like one of those junkie houses where everyone's everything looks all fucked up and everyone's just got like needles hanging out of their arms and they're just like like dead on the floor looking because they're all like just fucked um and he shoots all of them but the gun doesn't shoot bullets flowers shoot out and they like come back to life and they're all happy and skipping around the house and like they're like sober and like normal looking and they look they go from like looking all like grungy and like missing teeth and like black eyes and all shit like that to like they look healthy again and instead of killing people he like makes them like normal and then like by the end like the house just looks like a regular like house of people because he just goes around just like a- like executing each person but it's not executing they get hit in the face with like a bunch of flowers that come out of the gun I-, I don't know why but i just saw like creatively speaking that just like was dark but also like bizarre and just like that was just like one of those uh ideas that i had that just like didn't make sense that i liked yeah. um because the that- concept of the professional is that he's he's an assassin but uh he's not like uh like he's a hitman but he's like killing like the worst parts of humanity in the music industry and things like that like he's not like like the whole concept isn't that he's just like a serial killer murderer it's it's more like metaphorical with like with it you know what i mean because i want to take an artistic route of everything i'm not like trying to be super literal and um so like that was one concept for a video. I've had like you know other other concepts for uh for shit like um I mean I could do like like rapping at the camera uh shit all day long, but I've had other ones where like I wish I had the money for like really cinematic type shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's one of them that I'm comfortable with sharing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want you to give away like any trade secrets or anything like that either. It's just it's just one of those things like I always figured it'd be kind of cool. I'll share one of mine is uh I always wanted to make a not like a war movie, but kind of like a war movie. It'd be kind of fun. War movie, but uh I guess there was already a band that did, did that. I think not Mastodon. There was a there's just a band that already did that. They were just about like true tales of of world war ii and stuff like that and uh i don't know i always I always it kind of comes from being a kid and you know the kid the kid and you always wanted to you know you know play the stupid war games and stuff like that and yeah. i always thought it'd be kind of fun like navy seals and you know the call of duty and then it wasn't it didn't have anything to do with anything like that but i always thought that, that stuff was always really fun and interesting i used to play paintball as a kid a lot and you know what i mean with the with the friends when when they would go and stuff like that so it was always it was always cool that's that was always my idea but now it's to the point where i was almost want to do stuff a lot more uh i wouldn't say palatable what would they call that not even family friendly it's more like realistic like realistic mm-hmm. or so weird that it's like abstract art 
So yeah. I really uh, like, like the so, I really like the so weird shit. Like yes. Um, I'm trying to think of a music video that like I really like, but I'm just like not think of me, thinking of any off the top of my head. But there's definitely a lot of videos out there that I've seen that were just like bizarre and you they're left just like what the fuck did i just watch you know what i mean like this doesn't make any sense but uh <laughs> that's where uh, that's where i was when i watched that uh once upon a once upon a time in hollywood i like that I had, movie i had no idea what it was about i went into it not knowing anything mm -hmm. about the movie and i went Same. what's the point of this movie and then at the very end i was going the house was like what's this all about oh i did not know that i didn't know that was I never really looked up Charles Manson or anything, so I didn't. I just truly just didn't know. Uh, so to give that movie a fair shake, though, I give it a nine out of ten. It was really good. Even yeah. I didn't know what the point was, but once everything kind of clicked, it went from a seven to a nine. Really good. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, I think. I mean, let's just be fair. I can't think of a like a really bad Tarantino film. No, I don't like there's movies that he's made that like I don't know if I'd watch it multiple times, but I've never seen a Tarantino film. I've been like, this is a complete fail. Maybe like him. the worst one might be like the hateful eight. That's the only one I can think of. that's like the worst, but that wasn't even a bad movie. Mm -hmm. It might. Uh, but he sure likes him some Brad Pitt and. <laughs> he likes Brad Pitt. He likes uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, uh, uh black guy. Shoot! Whoa! I'm Samuel Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. Yes, not Samuel L. Jackson. Everybody says Samuel L. Jackson. It's Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, I, well, I, I know it is that? Samuel L. Jackson, but I don't pronounce. I don't. I don't put that. <laughs> did you see? All the time. Did you see that the stupid? Uh, I saw the video the other day, and it just had me thinking about it. So I've been thinking about it ever since. Mother. No, I, maybe okay. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's just on shorts and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm getting old. I can tell that. But yeah, man, too much fun. So, yeah. uh, what what else you got? Hmm. God, I wish I had that last question still, but it's just it's gone. There, I can't I can't find it can't find it because i feel like it wasn't it was i mean it's not that important obviously but it was still something and it's, it's we're way past it now is there any music that you want to talk about because i know you did film some shit over the last couple of days and uh do you want to briefly talk about that at all sure uh sure so uh i won't give too many details about the kind of year i've had because there's still a lot of things in the works and you remember what i was texting you about uh i don't want to get into too many too many things about it just uh know that i'm fine i'm not like uh you know really hurt or anything like that like uh you know like mentally or you know i'm not having any like deep-seated issues or anything like that nothing wrong there uh but uh let's just say i was in a car accident uh wasn't anything where I was end up in the hospital or anything like that, but uh, it didn't help anything along with some of the other stuff I, I ended up dealing with as well that are private to me. Uh, so that being said, uh, it kind of opened my eyes more to insurance. And I mean like car insurance. Yeah. And it goes from car insurance to people driving on the roads it should not be that easy for people to get a driver's license <laughs> you know what i mean like it's to the point now where i remember driving around when i was a kid and you know traffic would get bad every once in a while but it's like a nightly occurrence anymore ever since all the californians decided to leave california and go elsewhere uh sorry hate to dig at the californians like that but y'all can't drive and uh, they come up here, <laughs> they come up here, stop up the freeway, and then uh, pretty soon, <laughs> it's not it's not too long before we start hearing, you know, whoops. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I hit the wrong button. But even still, you start hearing all of these, uh, every day, you know, we're, we're looking at shootings and stuff like that, and a lot of, uh, a lot of incidents 
like, like that. And, um, you know, I wasn't at any point, you know, ever going to hurt anybody for, for, you know, what ended up happening to me, but I could see why, uh, I know they were going to, they look like they're about to run. I like commit a hit and run. Like, why would you run? That does. I remember everybody. Okay, exchange information. Your day was kind of ruined. Hand it off to the insurance, and then kind of fight that battle for a while. But now it's just getting to the point where it's getting. Uh, insurance kind of says, "Well, well we didn't crash. <laughs> you pay for it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It might not even be your fault." And then I start seeing it more and more in the comments where people are saying, "I don't know if you notice this, but car theft is going up too." Where people say in the comments, just uh, get all your insurance. You know, it's, it's, that's why we pay insurance. That's why we pay insurance. I'm going, well, if you've ever dealt with insurance, you would know that that's not the case. You yeah, will they never. Want, they want to get out of paying it if they can. Every single chance they get. And, yeah. and, and there's like no exception to that rule at all. So, um, uh, Again, I don't, I don't want to give too many details because it'll it'll come out when it kind of comes out. I'm not going to really give a specific date, uh, or else the next thing I know there'll be like four or five other people <laughs> trying to do the same thing. Right. So I thought of it first. Yeah, you heard it, it here. Someday, yeah, you heard it here. I'm blowing the whistle on you guys. No, <laughs> so uh, as far as uh, as as far as that goes, so I kind of thought about that, had the idea, and then moved uh, moved forward, made it into a reality, and it's an all self self-filmed self-produced totally off the beaten path as far as my music has been concerned uh it's not what uh people would expect and i'm I'm really really stoked to, to hear about that however you can start seeing these and i, and I will explain this because you'll probably start seeing these a little bit more is i'm going to start making some videos to help people out a little bit not uh tutorials but just like a list of a few things very short series uh talking about a little bit of the not really the behind the scenes but like uh mixing ish how to use some of these things because there's too many times when i've been running across artists that don't know what compression is uh they don't know what a preamp is you know what i mean mm -hmm. they don't know the uh, reason for bumping up your things like your sample rate and stuff like that uh, they don't know the reasons for that kind of stuff. And I kind of figured it'd be easier to just kind of explain it because I wish somebody would explain it to me yeah. instead of having to dig through, you know, 48 different 15 minute long videos back in 2014 when most of the guys that were I'm not making any digs at anybody, but I'm going to use my little, my little, uh, <laughs> my little voice, my voiceover character, Apu. Uh, what you do is you take the compressor and then you move it to 4.1 duration. <laughs> and I'm like, good God. This 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 kind of sucks because they're trying to use like the free plugins and stuff like that from FL Studio. Uh, those videos weren't any good in 2013, and the plugins weren't any good because they were all stock plugins. I did not know in order to be able to to make music that you had to kind of get rid of the all the spot uh, stock plugins. Now they're getting pretty they're getting pretty good with the the changes in software. Yeah, the, st uh, the stock started... plugins are getting better and better, but yeah, yeah, there's still there's still better plugins that you could buy out there for sure. Oh yeah, uh, uh, Fab Filters, one of them, and then uh, that's that's kind of the one. I, and they they have their own explainer videos for it, but they don't uh, because people just either just don't watch them. But it, anymore, when I'm working with people and working with you know maybe smaller artists or people who are a little bit more inexperienced, and they're saying, uh, "What do you, what do you mean by taking this? Uh, you know the the compression? What, what do you what do you mean by that?" Here's the link. <laughs> watch yeah. the link. Just watch the video. That way, I don't, I don't, I don't have to explain it every time. But it's getting to be the point where I work with uh, some businesses too, where they still are in the age of if you press the record button on a camera, it goes to YouTube, and you cannot convince them otherwise. Once you press record, you hit the record button on the camera, it goes right to YouTube. I know all this works. I wish. I really wish. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be fun. That would save, that fun would save me editing tonight before <laughs> having to upload right. everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll holler at you about some other stuff about that too. Oh, but yeah, yeah man, uh, as far as, as, and then as far as the music goes, so uh, that you just keep a look at, uh, look out on uh, Rich Warren <laughs> OFC on YouTube, man. That's the best I can tell you. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to push the, push the traffic there. It should be fun. 
and Definitely. I think I think there's going to be some really cool stuff going on, and I'm I'm really hoping that this uh, that this does more than just makes music because I've always uh, I've enjoyed making music, but I I enjoy making videos more. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all fun shit, honestly. At the end of the day, but. You doing all right over there, man? You look like you fall asleep. <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm here, but we, I, I am getting fucking tired. It's midnight, so I think we're, you know, we've been going for like three hours, and I want to, even after all the coffee I drank, it's it's starting to fade. Um, you need long some ass day, to the trade, long, brother. Long ass day, fucking building this gym, man. Oh, Tell me about it, God. Yeah, I hear you. I just, yeah. I got done with filming for the last two. That's yeah. that's yeah. effort. But yeah. yeah, you building the gym though. You gotta lift the heavy equipment in order to install it. So hey, well, muscles, man, muscles, dog. <laughs> now I now I don't need a gym membership. I got a Peloton in here to ride the bike while I watch TV, and then I go downstairs for the heavy lifting shit. And I don't gotta get a gym membership. I'm gonna get. I better get in shape with all this shit around. I have no excuse anymore. <laughs> I got no fucking excuse anymore. Um, no excuses, right? Um, anything else you want to say? Because I mean, That's it. fuck, man. Well, this was good. This was great. Cool, awesome. Let me know yeah. when you're hit, hitting the end record button. But uh, as far as I can say, I I, I really appreciate you, and uh, thanks for having me on, man. It's always a pleasure. It's always fun. Yeah, of course, man. Of course. Thank you very much for coming on and uh, saving the day for me tonight. Oh, you're fine. All right, brother. Take care. Ta-ta.